talk is money, honey. All we talk is money. All we talk is money. It's like bees to the honey. The sauce cast, baby. All right. Clap it up, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the sauce cast. We're typically finance meets romance, typically oh. the sexiest financial show in the world. But we got some guests on today that want to talk about what's going on in the world, what's going on in America, Love it. what's going on in the metaverse and the AI world with immigration and politics, politicians. Mm -hmm. So we brought in some of the best guests from the east to the west uh to get some things off their chest oh, mm -hmm. wow. and uh today we're gonna discuss yeah i'll just keep flowing if you guys what you want me to do <laughs> anyway guys guys welcome to the uh my name is adam sauce you called me sauce now typically i want to see you guys get out there get paid laid, laid and, and do it your way but today i want you to get deep in thought i want you to ponder i want you to set your flag on where you want to be what you stand for who you like who you're against Set your position, right, Padrino? Let's go. Anyway, uh, we got a lot of amazing topics today, but let's first introduce our guest, uh, the only other man on the panel mm. on today's show. We got an Aussie in the house, Another the Rattlesnake hundred. TV man himself, Jake Julius. He's here. A round of applause came a little premature, but that's fine. <laughs> we'll give you two rounds of applauses. <laughs> You've seen him on YouTube. He's everywhere. A lot of reaction videos. I've been watching you for a while now commentator i would say that you're pretty conservative but these days conservative just sort of means not crazy uh <laughs> yeah level-headed i actually can describe myself as pretty conservative as pretty well. conservative okay. yeah not overly conservative pretty conservative slightly conservative yeah pretty conservative yeah. Okay. but do reactions analysis videos and anal analysis of debates talk about culture politics geopolitics that sort of thing and you're australian I am. From what part of Australia? I'm from the Sunshine Coast. Amy Sunshine and I Coast. talked about this already. Yeah. She was saying that she thought my accent was posh. Yeah. And I was saying that I think she's a sellout. She's like adopted an American accent. Yeah. You know? We've indoctrinated yeah. her. We had a Neither huge, we had a huge fight, but we're cool now. These we're things cool. are involuntary. <laughs> well. says, what, get, how long have you been in the States now? Uh, about a month. Okay, give him six years. We'll yeah. see what his accent Whoa, sounds like. Oh, that sounds like a challenge. Anyway, so Jake, we'll see. Six years a from pretty now. conservative <laughs> Australian Speaking of a pretty conservative Australian, we got hey. Amy Let's go. Rodney Dangerfield <laughs> in the house, as always. Amy, Hi. you ready for it? You know, there's rumors swirling. Are you, are you not, your family, the Dangerfield? Rodney Dangerfield, if you guys don't know, if you're sort of the under 30 crowd, you're a Gen Zer, you might not know who Rodney Dangerfield is. Malik, I'm sure, is already on it, pulling up Rodney Dangerfield, because he's good like that. He just pulls things up, because once he hears me say it, boom, it's already on screen. <laughs> so Rodney Dangerfield can't get no respect. Oh, yeah. Amy, just real quick. Are the rumors true? What's the relation with Rodney Dangerfield? I'd like to settle it once and for all. Listen, Adam. I can neither confirm nor deny what my grandmother and... <laughs> Rodney Dangerfield were doing some Ooh. 55 years ago. <laughs> really? So there's Can't a, confirm it either. Because I, he I heard he traveled a lot, though, well, to I Australia. Heard, no offense, I heard your grandma traveled a lot. <laughs> she used to go <laughs> down under. <laughs> and when Rodney was confer, uh, performing somewhere on the Sunshine Coast in his mm. posh little accent back in the day, he got some respect. He met... He got some respect. <laughs> he met Apparently, Mima Dangerfield. <laughs> you guys say Mima? I don't know. I just I feel like that's what they say in Australia. That's what, what I said. That's what I used to call my grandma. Oh, there it is. Oh, wow. There it is. It's yeah. confirmed. Wow. Let me tell you who calls their grandma Mima. Psychopaths. <laughs> yeah. okay? Makes sense. She's grandma. Yeah. Well, I don't know where we got it from. I've literally never heard anyone else say that in my entire life. Yeah. I thought we made it up. I, no. Maybe that's you made up a lot of things. Mima. Like me mom. Mom. Me and we called the Mima. we called that's my great grandmother. So old just Mima. to to no, to put the, the ribbon on this. I cannot confirm nor deny, Adam. Okay. That's all I'll say. We'll leave. Well, it shout out to your family, what about, the Dangerfield family. <laughs> what about Patrick Dangerfield, <laughs> Australian footballer? Related? Definitely. No. She can either confirm nor deny. Not a sports gene in my entire. Okay. Unfortunately. Well, thank you for being back. We all know Amy is a. Um, usual suspect on this show and she can either confirm nor de deny her relationship to the late great Rodney Dangerfield speaking of 
never late, but always great. Laura Padrino is in the house. You're right, I'm never if you're looking, late. I'm that. that's right. If you're looking for the best Cuban food in all of South Florida, go check out Padrino's Cuban. They got five locations. Yeah, five locations. And we got a pop up location going on here at Valuetainment these wow. days. Because mm -hmm. we got empanadas, we got arepas, we got we arroz con folla, we got, we got, what are the, what are the platanos? The platanos are le legit. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> shout out to my Cuban friends. Mother, wife, entrepreneur, Pilates instructor, apparently. No. <laughs> I attend Pilates, and I'm not just pretty conservative, I'm pretty and conservative. She's, yeah. there's a lot of pretty conservative things pretty, going on here, but don't call me pretty. Oh, exactly. Speaking of pretty, but not conservative, our friend <laughs> Kyla Turner is here. Kyla. She's not so erudite, not so knowledgeable and wise, but she pretends to be on podcast, which is amazing. Yeah, it's a LARP. Uh, Kyla, once again, I would say that you were the MVP of the last show, even if we had Jamie Kennedy here. Mm -hmm. And I know we're going to get into a lot of discussions uh, today. And I appreciate you and I applaud you for showing up, debating, and doing it in a uh, beautiful, elegant manner. Um, and even if you disagree, you don't do it without being disagreeable. Right? Now you two start fighting. Go! <laughs> anyway, <laughs> speaking of pretty and agreeable, uh, yeah, nice. everyone needs a sidekick. Like Natalia Del Valle in the you house. Say disagreeable. No, <laughs> no. You're gonna say, Speaking I'm of not, disagreeable. I'm not even. Natalia. <laughs> I'm in a good mood today. I'm not even gonna throw Natalia under the bus like I normally do. Yes. She's here. She's doing great. She's clearly got the message from New Year's that she needs to get her money right and her weight tight. Yeah. And she's doing it both. Yeah, actually, my credit score has gone up and my weight Weight's has gone, gone down. down. Oh, <laughs> hey, oh, I like that. I like that. Yep. Malik, see if we can pull up Manek real quick. Yes. Um, and also the Candace Cuomo Town Hall. See if we can pull that up. But Nat, uh, I know we're going to get started on the show. What are you looking forward to? What do we got going on in the chat? What should people know? Yeah. And then we'll get this party started. Well, welcome, everybody. Happy SauceCast today. Today's going to be a really exciting episode. We've got a nice panel lined up. I'm ready for some debates, for some deep conversations. So make sure you guys obviously like, comment, subscribe, do all those fun things. Um, and give us some super chats for our guests. Give us some questions. Challenge some of the things that we're saying. Let's mm. get into a conversation today. Um, but aside from that, I, I want to jump right into it because we got a lot of topics to cover. We got a lot going on. Yeah. Um, real quick, a little uh, housekeeping items uh you know that we have oh, yes. uh, one of the leading business development business consulting apps in the world going on right now called Minect, where you can connect with experts by the minute mm -hmm. Minect, and uh it's been uh, amazing to the conversations that we're having the consultations that we're having um pbd myself tom Vinny, the tates there's a whole crew of people i think jake just I got joined. my next hat on nice. right now. He's got a Manek tap. He's representing. Yes, sir. Uh, we got to get some more ladies on there. I think Padrino, I think you'd be yes. great on there. Yes. Kyla, I think you'd be great on oh, there. Yeah. Amy, I'm shocked you're not even on there yet. Mm -hmm. Let's get some beautiful, intelligent ladies. Look at Kellyanne mm -hmm. Arnold out there okay. She's doing phenomenal. her thing. I'm sick of this sausage party that's going on on <laughs> here because uh -huh. uh -oh. I don't like a sausage party. You know what's cool about a sausage party? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. So let's get some lovely ladies. You got morale out there. Nice. Uh, but check us out on Manek where you can connect with thought leaders, business leaders, content creators, entrepreneurs galore. You can find us all on Manect. And we learned something that what the cool kids say when something's dope, they say, Peng. Peng. It's what? in East London. I lived in East London for peng. three London years. Peng. And if you say it's a Peng Ting, it means she looks nice. It's a Peng Ting. And if you say oh. that food is Peng, it means it was yeah. a good meal. And the oh. reason that's relevant yeah. is because Lisa Peng yeah. is running that thing on yep. Manect. So You're Peng Peng, shout today. out to Lisa Peng. There it is. I'm being nice today, guys. I'm one of those nice moods. If you go to East London and you say ping, they'll know what you're saying. Also, last housekeeping item. If you're not aware, next week, next Friday, I believe it is March 8th, we're doing a town hall here in this exact studio for the PBD podcast here at Valuetainment with the one and only Chris Cuomo and the one and only Candace Owens right here. Let's go. It might be sold out. I think, think it's so. If but if is, not, you can check tickets. the website. Sold out. I believe Sold it out. is 5990live.com. You never know. You can join the waiting list and put your name down to be a part of some of the greatness that we do here. Um, check that out. The live events. Uh, SLS, I believe, is also selling out. That's yes. our sales leadership summit. Tomorrow, We're getting ready to start selling tickets to the vault. That's coming mm -hmm. up soon. And you can check us out on Manect. Um, speaking of checking us out, last but not least... 
Shout out to the ebony to my ivory. Woo-hoo. Malik Hudson's in the house. Go, Malik. Looking tan. Yes. You know? That lighting, though, right? No, you think it, I, okay. You, you actually think I'm joking. I saw Malik sitting on uh, outside on the bench the other day. I Somebody. said, what are you doing? He goes, I'm getting some sun, bro. True or false? <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's true. I got to stay toasted. You were looking a little pale. I'm glad you're looking shining. You're shining, all right? <laughs> that vitamin D. Yeah. yeah. That vitamin D. Speaking of vitamin D, ladies, uh, I'm single. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like Didn't to you get go to sun. Temple this Adam. weekend? <laughs> son, <laughs> everyone's got such a Jake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. knew what you meant straight that's away. That's right. Yeah. Son, some vitamin D. Anyway, we have some major topics to discover today. We're, we're to, to cover today. There's three major topics that we're going to be covering and everyone's going to have an equal opportunity to weigh in. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I want to get your thoughts on these three major topics. Here they are. Number one, what the hell's going on with AI? AI has gone officially woke, and there's stories to prove it. We'll go through that. Number two, uh, the migrant crisis that is, let me choose my words carefully here, mm-hmm. that is infecting America. Mm. Okay. What was the uncareful version? <laughs> oh. I don't know. I thought that too. Hey, whatever vitamin D does, um, <laughs> it, it's not good. There's stuff going on here with this migrant crisis, and we're going to talk about it. The beautiful thing is, we don't have a lot of born and bred Americans on the panel. We've we have a Canadian, honest. we have an Aussie, we have a Cuban American, born in America, but your family's from Cuba. Mm-hmm. We have a gorgeous mutt right here from Guyana, Puerto Rico. Hey, friends. Hey, y'all. Hey. And then we have a pretty conservative. Aussie out there yeah. who's lost her accent apparently, right? She's little still bit. Got it. No. Don't change, Amy. They, tell her it's no. in between. It's a hybrid. What's now. annoying is to all the um, Americans I sound Australian, but to all the Australians I sound American. Just pick a side. Yeah. If you stay in the I middle of the road, that. you get hit by a car. Right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> She's playing both sides. That's right. You guys middle of the road, you get hit by a car. Yeah. I like that. Oh. Um, no last but not least, we'll talk about what's going on, uh, not only in America but in within politicians all over the world. Many of the world leaders are senior citizens. And we'll have that discussion, whether that is a good or bad thing. They say with age comes wisdom, but also with age comes falling down the stairs, remembering where you're at, and eating ice cream like it's uh, (laughs) going out of style. Uh, Shout out to Joe Biden, his cookies and cream, Rocky Road mentality. That's what's going on there. And of course, we'll end with a happy ending, uh, and this will be a unique one. So uh, with that being said, thank you guys for being here. This is your first time being part of the show. Uh, give us a sub, like the chat, uh, like what's going on here. And if you're a, a uh, repeat offender of being part of the SauceCast, we value you. We love you. Let us know some of the topics and some of the guests that you would like to see on the show. We've got a yes. all-star lineup coming up in March, and we're just kicking this bad boy off. You're going to see what's going on. Yeah. But let us know your thoughts on who you would like to see going on there. So, so you know, someone recommended Jake Julius. Boom, we got him in 24 hours. Bam. Boom. We shipped him out of an Australia. I came here in a barrel. Came here in a barrel, barrel of monkeys, and there he is now. Um, Malik, you ready to pull up some of these stories as we get going? Malik, he's got his uh, vault. I almost said Celsius. He's got his vault drink. He's on point. Let's get ready to go. Let's get ready to start this show. We love it. Boom. Okay. So I'm not sure if you guys have seen what's going on in the AI world. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it was, I'll never forget the day that I heard about what this chat GPT AI was doing. It was November of 2022. I was sitting in a restaurant uh, with my buddy in South Beach, uh, Big Pink, if, uh, if okay. you've ever been there, you know about that. Mm-hmm. My buddy Adrian, he mm-hmm. was on here. Um, this guy was a former correspondent, war correspondent, Bloomberg, CNBC, CNN. He's been around the world and he starts telling me about AI mm-hmm. and chat GPT and open AI. I said, what, what, what is this? What are you talk? I, I'm not genuinely familiar with this. And now it's been 15 months later. Who doesn't know about AI? But some of the perils that's going on with AI, some of the good, the bad, the ugly in AI are sort of seeping out right now. And, you know, it's, um, I kind of, it, it reached sort of a crescendo this week with the uh, emergence of Google's Gemini AI. Mm -hmm. So uh, I put down a list of some of the AI leading companies out there. I'm sure I'll miss a few, but there's OpenAI's ChatGPT. We're all familiar with this. There's Google's Gemini AI. Mm -hmm. There's Facebook Meta's Meta AI. Microsoft has an AI called Copilot, and apparently 
Twitter slash X is working on their AI, as well as a whole host of other AIs out there. So here's some of the topics that are trending right now, some of the themes, and we'll have an open discussion, and we'll get going. So first story, and Malik will pull this up. Racial bias in artificial intelligence testing Google, Meta, ChatGPT, and Microsoft chatbots. So we'll have that discussion with that. Google's absurdly woke Gemini AI refuses to condemn, wait for it, pedophilia. Oh. Interesting. Nate Silver, who used to uh, be one of the major, major um, data and polling um, analysts at the news site 538, says Gemini AI should be shut down for refusing to say whether if Hitler or Elon <laughs> Musk is worse. I don't know. Jury's still out. Ridiculous. Elon Musk got into it uh, with Google's AI over whether or not um, misgendering Caitlyn Jenner is worse or an actual nuclear apocalypse. This is what's going on right now. Um, we'll also go through some of the um, left-leaning bias of what's going on in Google News and uh, what companies are doing to snoop through your messages using AI, a whole host of conversations. So let's start with this. Racial bias and artificial intelligence, testing Google Meta, ChatGPT. So Google's Gemini AI uh, and Meta's AI have, uh, have had trouble providing images of white people. Gemini stated pictures of white people reinforce harmful stereotypes and Meta AI claimed it couldn't generate such images, producing images of other races instead. By the way, Malik, do you have some of the actual images that they wanted to pull up, such as um, what the Vikings look like or what the Nazis look like? These are the Vikings, guys. Mm. Here's some of the... Looks so, familiar. America's founding fathers, Vikings, and the Pope, according to Google. Now, you don't have to <laughs> be born in America to know that George Washington, was black. dare I say it, was a black guy. <laughs> Thank you. Wasn't he also White in a guy. Confederate outfit? Maybe. The, the black so, that's where you know, That's where it is. Ultimately, <laughs> why do you guys think that AI, specifically Google's Gemini, has that's gone Nazi. completely woke? Look at these images. Look at that Nazi, that black Nazi right there. <laughs> or the, uh, what does that look like? A black like or uh, a Native American like. Viking. Yeah. yeah. These were all white people. It's very, it's very clear that... DEI and the woke agenda, dare I say it, is just anti-straight white men. Hmm. Jake, you talk a lot about this on your channel, Rattlesnake TV. Give me a little insight from your perspective. Well, to me, it almost seems like a flex. It almost seems like them saying, we're just going to sort of program you guys out. And one might say it looks very Orwellian on the surface of it, the fact that they sort of control the present, they control the future, mm. whoever controls AI, because make no mistakes, AI is the future. Mm -hmm. Whatever, whatever's happening in that world at the moment is the future. Mm -hmm. So we can sort of sit here and complain about it all day and then this will sort of go missing next week. Or as conservatives, we can do what the liberals do and we can take action about it. Mm -hmm. And we can, we can have a little bit of power and a little bit of control in this regard. Because it's clear that whoever controls this at the moment, this unbelievably powerful tool, mm -hmm. we're in a technological revolution at the moment whereby they are able to literally program you out of history. Mm -hmm. And if, if this is what we're using moving forward over the next few years, and if this does become the forefront of technology and they have the ability to just program people out of history like that, that's concerning. So it does seem like a little bit of a flex to me. The one redeeming factor I will say about this is that Google did come out and somewhat apologize. They said, I believe the quote, they didn't hit the mark, mm -hmm. which doesn't fill me with confidence, but they did come out and apologize mm. in a way. But yeah, like I said, this is a massive, massive deal. We're, en we're entering a technological revolution in terms of AI and how that's going to affect our mm -hmm. culture. So I would like to talk about a little bit more the way forward, mm -hmm. the things that we're mm -hmm. going to do moving forward, because we can sit here and complain about it. We've seen a lot of anti-white sentiment over the past you know, few years at least. This is not something that's new to people who have been paying attention. But yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to talk a little bit about what we're going to do moving forward. Okay, what's your suggestion of what we should do moving forward? Well, as, a, as somebody who's pretty conservative, as we, as we say, I think that the liberals are very good at taking action. So for example, if you look at Silicon Valley, these guys are in the positions of power where they're, where they're moving the levers. 
at places like not so much Twitter anymore, but you know Facebook and and Meta and all these places. If you go there, it's going to be quite a liberal dominated place. And I'm not even hating on them for that because they're mobilizing and that's kind of what you should be doing. But as conservatives moving forward, we should be thinking, how can we impact the culture? We should be mobilizing and we should be, you know, taking back some of the power, if you will. Yeah, and, and to give some credence to what you were saying, uh, Google has temporarily disabled Gemini, acknowledging that it needs to address bias and discrimination in AI. Mm -hmm. And I'll just pose this question. You're saying that AI is the future. Oh, absolutely. Right? And yeah. I don't think anybody disagrees with that. It's like, you know, there was a famous story about, you know, Bill Gates having conversations with Steve Jobs and, you know, leading uh, business executives and thought leaders. And they were basically saying, and this was probably in the early 90s, like, listen, if you're not on the internet, mm. you're mm -hmm. going to be left in the dustbins of history. And some people took notice and did something about it. And some people waited around. They weren't under early adopters. And we all know that the people who are early adopters on the internet are billionaires now. So, yeah. um, Kyla, you know, you're, you're proudly uh, liberal, Protestant. progressive, yeah. um, okay. but you're also very reasonable. So, um, Google shutting down uh, and disabling uh, temporarily Gemini. You're also white, That's you know? That's true. I don't know if you noticed that. Good. I don't know if you've seen a mirror a recently. Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts on what's going on with AI? I'm sure you agree that AI is the future, but uh, what happens if you were left out of the future? Uh, I think like saying like it's writing history out is just like probably no offense, but I think it's an overstatement. Um, it, it's not like our histor historians and like archaeologists and like these entire massive institutions of like history writing are going to disappear overnight. What it more so is, is it's super cringe uh, Silicon Valley like Californians who are so out of touch with like the rest of the world that they thought for a second that that would be appropriate. Just so you guys know, most other left leaning like internet like breaking points covered this story today and they were like laughing. They're yeah. like, this is way too PC and cringe. Like it's embarrassing. So are it's like, it, I am left leaning. No, and are they they're extremely left leaning. With Saga and Crystal? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought Saga and was a conservative. Yeah, but she's a crystal and they're both, okay. she's a liberal and she's yep, sure. okay, laughing gotcha. at it, right? Gotcha. So both of them, there's a lot of liberals that are openly being like, this is embarrassing. Like, mm -hmm. this is cringe. This is not what we want. I just don't know if it's as extreme as far as like, um, they're trying to write us out of history. I think it's more so that there's been like an ideological capture in California and Silicon Valley, which is to your point, I think it's actually really important that conservatives stop being like, oh, media's bad and oh, like we should, you know, just do labor and they need to like go to college, they need to get like, into social media races they need to start making media companies yeah. uh, i'm for that because that's how like ideas wrestle one another mm -hmm. so i'm definitely for conservatives writing but i don't know if i'd say like gemini in and of itself is like this big red flag because it seems like robustly the reaction has been negative i mean vikings were just like they were just white um nobody's like shocked by this and I don't know, so you know act, by the speaking way. about conservative and and, and more right-leaning and left-leaning and i appreciate you're saying that if you're in the middle you kind of get uh, run over, well, as somebody that is in the middle, I get run over a lot. Mm -hmm. But I, I think overall, <laughs> I'm in the middle, but there's situations I'm very far right on, and there's situations I'm pretty far left on, libertarian, if you will. Yeah. Like, dude, smoke all the freaking weed you want. I don't think anybody should be arrested for that. But on the right side of things, dude, leave the freaking kids alone when it comes to the tranny stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't want any men playing with women. You know, Jerk Nowitzki <laughs> went viral the other day because mm. he's out there playing with women, so it, it's an issue by issue thing. But here's what's undeniable. Speaking of Google, so we're talking about uh, the Gemini. This isn't so much AI, but AI helped us find this information. Google News bias, I don't know if you could pull this up, Malik. It skewed even further left, mm -hmm. uh, with 63% coming from liberal media sources, you know, because uh, Google News is an aggregator, it's a news aggregator, right? With only 6% coming from the right. This is a New York Post story, right? And, uh, you know, there's, there's news out there that, you know, in, in, um, in uh, universities, I think it's 13 to 1, as much as 16 mm. to 1 liberal professors to, for every one conservative professor. So they certainly have a monopoly on what we talk about, the woke mind virus out there, and um, what's going on with that. So in 2023, 63% 20, of Google News articles were sourced from liberal sources, 6% were right-leaning. 6%, I mean, the margin of error is two to 3% in general. So yeah, there it is right there. Mm. Eight of the top 10 news sites 
arranged by Google's were left-leaning. Google only displayed 6% of Reuters and 5% of Fox News articles. So we all know that, five, that Fox News is obviously more right-leaning. Reuters, I would just sort of put as sort of like a Wall Street Journal, probably like center, center-right type of this um, news site. But Google News displayed a consistent left-leaning bias across the following issues, abortion, climate change, economy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I get um, sort of uh, uh, laughed at, clowned. I'm like, oh, just Google it. They have the answer there. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. people are like, Google's woke, bro. <laughs> you know, what are you doing? I can't Google it. And then there's other sites out there. I forget the name of the Duck, site. DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo. Duck, duck, mm -hmm. I'm like, listen, bro, I, I ain't DuckDuckGo in information. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm going to Google the information. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder how long those numbers have been like that. You know, like I wonder how long we've been so left. How like wh when was that studies, turning point it's where increased. it's been? Yeah, yeah I know yeah. it's increased, but I wonder when was that mark where we were kind of equal. Well, Malik, what, what just see if you can time? find out what the article what says that, regarding that without yeah. pulling it up, Malik. But Amy, I want to get your thoughts on this. Google. When you go to look at something, how about I won't even say Google something because I almost said the word Google, right? Mm -hmm. That's like, hey, I'm going to go Uber somewhere, even though you're taking a lift. Yeah. Um, do you go on Duck Duck Go or are you Googling? <laughs> Or Bing? No, I'm Google. You're not binging? You're not <laughs> yahooing? Okay, so as a conservative or as a pretty conservative, mm -hmm. you're aware that the results are going to be a little more left-leaning. Did you know that? How do you... How do you deal with that? Yeah, I mean, I get a lot of my research off Twitter primarily. That's where I start researching the news and I may go to Google to like back up certain things or if I just need to search something like very fast on the go. Uh, but I'm very aware of the left leaning bias that's in media that's mm -hmm. in ai um yeah you'd have to be living under a rock to have not noticed that and um if i could really quick to kyla's point like i do agree that the majority of liberals would look at what's gone down with gemini recently and think that it's totally ridiculous and not reflective of their party but i think it's also the way you addressed it was a little bit dismissive of the fact that like this is your side and this is the logical conclusion played out to the extreme level that that side is willing to go to. And it begs the question, if Elon Musk's AI came out and we asked it, would you be able to generate pictures of aboriginals or Native Americans? Do you think it would make them white? I don't think so. And I think it really highlights the fact that there's two sides. And while there is a lot of nuance in the middle, I do consider myself centrist in some regards. But I think there's a reason that it, it's been assigned facts over feelings. There's one side that are very much in their feelings. And there's one side that are very much concerned with facts. And when you see that play out to its most ridiculous conclusion, as in the case with Gemini AI, and we would have flipped the scripts and apply it to a conservative version, I don't think we would see the same level of lunacy playing out. Kyla, your response to Amy, who is putting all the blame of AI and Gemini <laughs> on you, squarely on you. It's Kyla. actually my first, I yes. actually made Gemini. As originally. the developer of AI, <laughs> yeah. how do you respond to Amy? As a developer of Gemini, just in case somebody doesn't understand that that's a joke, I'm not. <laughs> um, I guess... I would basically agree that the left won the social cultural war. I think that's self-evident. Probably like 2016, like Gamergate-esque is when we really started to see a surge of like leftism. The issue is that while there's a little bit of like leftist parasitic, um, I guess I don't feel like a need to own these like natural conclusions of tankies and leftists who I've been fighting against the entire time, right? And so it's like, I agree that the left has been bad at policing its own. Um, that's why I've stayed left. Um, dominantly, uh, not exclusively, because I believe in my liberal values. But yeah, the left has been really bad at policing its own, particularly in like getting obsessed with like liabilities when it comes to like offending people. I think it's really embarrassing how like processors are just like constantly afraid of any level of risk, mm -hmm. right? And so it's it's complicated, but it's complicated even more by the fact that oftentimes the people pursuing the highest levels of like education and achievement often tend to also be left leaning, and so it creates this burden of responsibility 
on a party that essentially is like, well, if you're outperforming consistently, you need to be like more mindful. I don't know if I'd buy that. Sorry, could you clarify what you meant by that? You mean people who like are generally what in the higher income brackets, higher level of education? Like I would say almost all of the above outperforming in media performance, outperforming in like uh, industriousness and entrepreneurship and outperforming in education. But is that because that's where people are not naturally gravitating or is it because there is some type of a built in agenda behind it where and now Nowadays, it's actually manifested as DEI, where specifically they're focusing in on a certain group. Like, don't you think there may have been an undercurrent of that in the culture building up until now, which has actually led to the ratification of this stuff in legislation now? It's probably, it's pro- the problem is that it probably occurred naturally at first, which is people high in openness to experience tend to always fall left. They also tend to be entrepreneurs and they also tend to pursue higher education, oh. right? In fact, we can pretty much determine your political leaning by a fair bit of genetics. It seems almost as heritable height and IQ and so yeah it is really interesting and so I think has what happened on the left been like this in-group bias that's occurred yes absolutely has there been like some crazy loud people that we've been too afraid to say no to yes absolutely right I've been vocally against these people my entire career and before my career Mm -hmm. Um, the issue is that for me as a left-leaning person is to get the right uh, parasiting all of us. And it's like, well, I'm not really part of this group. I don't own tankies. They aren't my people. I'm not interested in them. Just like I would say, conservative people don't own Nazis. They're not your people, or, right? right? What and was so, the word you were, tankies? Tankies, yeah. <laughs> who, are the, who are these people? Uh, tankies are going to be like agitative revolutionary communists. The so worst. Those, yeah. yeah. So those are annoying. the ones that you're not in bed with. You're not claiming the commies? Not a big fan of commies. Well, thank you for at least on that. <laughs> yeah. By the way, uh, Laura Petrina wants to speak up because as you were saying something, no, it, that wasn't she about wanted that. to weigh It was in. about a previous issue. I'll speak up. No, it was it was what you were saying before, and it's funny because you mentioned it, the, the minimizing of it. Um, what I felt you were mi- minimizing was the idea of erasing history, that that's, that was like a little bit too extreme to say that. I do think that that was pulling back the curtain to what they're doing. Maybe not outright, but... I mean, he who writes the codes rules the world, and they're writing this. There are people in the next generation that won't know things. This is where they're going to get their information from, because you're talking about historians and these people somewhere that are locking into history. Well, that might be all well and good, and I hope so, but for the most part, people are getting their information from this. If it wasn't so crazy outlandish, if it was, I would say if it was just like, I don't even know what percentage, less crazy, it would have been where we would have looked like psychos, conservatives would have been like, this is nuts, guys. And then everybody, what are you talking about? This is, this is how it happened. So because it was so crazy, it was good. It revealed something. It pulled back the curtain to like the lunacy in um, Silicon Valley or whatever of what's going on there. But had it not happened, this is the, the frog boiling. It's, it's little things like this. This one just happened to be so insane, which great. It revealed some things. But I do think it's part of like trying to to erase history or to rewrite it, not erase, but rewrite it. And, um, and it's evidence of that. And I do think that there's gonna be a generation of people that don't know what history is because these are the people that are, that are writing it. They're essentially creating a history that they want in their wokeness. It would be a few generations away, to be fair, if that, if that were to happen. But the issue is that we're entering into a time now where we're quite flippant about all of these technologies. And if you think about the way that AI is going to interact with the metaverse mm-hmm. and all of these new technologies mm-hmm. that are coming about, and then the fact that there is an ideological component to these and how they're all going to interact, it's going to build the world that we live in. So it's, I think that you'd be, I would hesitate to be flippant about that myself, about the fact that they're trying to erase a white an entire white race from from history. I don't think it's something to necessarily be flipping about, but I can understand why you think that it's not necessarily potentially mm-hmm. the biggest deal in the world because maybe it's it's down the line. But, but if you just look the at the levers, of, but if you just look at the happen. levers of power yeah. and the way that, okay. like you said before, the logical conclusion of it. Malik, I want you to do a case example for me, and then we'll move on to the second one. Use Gemini and Google show an image of Adam Sosnick. I think okay. I Shut As a white the guy, there's tons of images. There used, used to be a ton of images because, you know, I'm out there. Malik, see if you can pull up the first image you find of me online in the AI Gemini universe. Can you pull something up, Malik? They did yeah, pull up you. a white guy. Did you hear what it was? I don't know. Hold on. Let's see what Malik's got. No, but not for you. They oh. put in fat man, bucket of chicken, watching TV. And that was the white guy that popped up. Unbelievable. Malik, <laughs> show an image of me what you find online. 
There he is. I mean, are you? Wow, uh, Adam. Bro, is that, this is me? You look yeah. tanned, bro. Yeah, he's a vitamin okay. D. Yeah. You got guys, some vitamin D. Yeah. I got some vitamin D over the weekend. There Respect. Thank you, guys. They're trying to erase the white race. You know, I, I will say this, and then we'll move on to this other thing, because we, we're going to do some case examples. Yeah. As a Jew, I don't think that people would say, oh, you're Jewish, you're a white guy. You're not a tradition. Like, I don't know if you guys would say, oh, Adam's a white guy. It's just, yeah. I, don't, I don't, you know, I, I'm not in that world. Right. But if there's anybody that, or a group of people, you know, like the communists you talked about, the people I completely am diametrically opposed to are extremists. And who is typically the extremists? The neo Nazis, the KKK, the white nationalists. Mm. And I've never heard one thing that I've agreed with. But as DEI and wokeness has come down the pike, and I see what they're talking about, it's making me ponder, hmm, mm. they're trying to erase the white race. <laughs> they're, trying to, they're trying to take our country away. It's like, relax, Rick. No, they're not. Yeah. <laughs> but as some of these stories sort of manifest, it's like, mm, maybe Carl both? with the cloak has a point. <laughs> maybe yes. Bill with the neo-Nazi sign well, the, the thing uh, is that and, and the uh, swastika yeah. Maybe it's not as extreme as because these people were cast aside as delusional, psychopath mm -hmm. extremists. But as some of this DEI woke AI chatbot comes out, it's like but you're, you can't but even show a, a white a, image anymore. It's a such criticism an that was though. inaccurate 20 years ago that later becomes accurate doesn't retroactively make the criticism that was made 20 years ago accurate. What if it was a prophecy? I don't believe in you Nazi <laughs> prophecies. I suppose like not, the not question prophecy, that I would what pose, a, what is the process by which AI is going to erase white history? Like what are we actually believing here? Because while I'll be the first to bite bullets that there is a left-wing agenda that white guilt and Robin's terrible book mm -hmm. went way too rampant and people took it way too seriously. I would agree with all these things that like whiteness is like viewed as this like parasitic bad thing, which is terrible. Mm -hmm. It's actually really unhealthy. The, the issue that I'm having with like the fear mongering is what's the process that we believe Gemini and other AI is writing out the white race? I don't see that process. Taking Let me over. clarify. Let me clarify. My thing was not about specifically this topic of whiteness. It was the idea of AI and the code writers trying to change history to the woke whatever. So I'm not even talking specifically about white, nothing, nothing about this specific instance. This to me was revealing again, pulling back the curtain on what's there. But yes, I don't think that it is a flippant but issue. But I think you need the this to happen. I think you need some of these things awfully to happen because then that leaves opportunity yeah, yeah. for people to come in and correct it and create a better program. I mean, you know, as we find glitches through these programs, right, eventually we're going to have a, a Google that everyone relies on, right? Or there's going to be a chat GPT that everyone relies on because no matter what you type in, you more than 99% mm. get what you really need, right? Eventually, as we've seen within history, look, 63% is lit versus the other it will lean one way so that's why like mm. as awful as these things are happening it's opportunity for people to come in and create the the, the prime one that's going to be the reliable one for everybody so yeah. yeah but i'm saying it wasn't an accident like that wasn't like a whoopsie like mm -hmm. we did a bad job that mm. was intentional is what i'm trying to say like AI that was on purpose a, like way. a bias naturally either someone yeah. programmed it that they, way or if it's a it self-learning machine it yeah. means that it's based off what it is interpreting what, what is someone saying? has Put to create it no there, there, there are to guys let's be clear there are programmers yeah here. you have yeah. to create okay. no doubt the question is though what's the path i think that's what you're saying yeah like the 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 path is the most important thing to outline i'll be the first yeah. to be like, yeah, it sounds like some cringy, uh, like overly woke programmers thought this was a good idea and mm -hmm. they were dumb, just like like. But do you think like that's what every Hollywood here? writer right now is going on? The yes. issue is I don't understand how it's rewriting history or undoing. So maybe you're like, it's not rewriting, it's our future history. But it's like, nobody in the future is gonna be like, was Joe Biden black or white? No. Like who has no. any idea? Like, okay. I'm, not, well, I'm, you know, not, Joe, I'm not afraid about Joe the white Biden race being lost said, said, You know, if you don't, you don't vote for Joe yeah, Biden, yeah, you yeah, ain't black. black. True. So, so I think that listen, there is, there is, I wanna leave it here, Jake, for one second regarding the whiteness and everything with that and the coloring, we talked about that. There's other elements though when it comes to the AI, and I wanna give you some case example, because it's not just about skin color, there's actually about social issues mm -hmm. and their responses mm -hmm. to what is right and is wrong and the nuance between that, and it's, it's actually pretty shocking. Disturbing. So here's some pretty disturbing stuff. So Google's, again, Gemini AI, yeah. um, they're absurdly woke, 
Gemini refuses to condemn pedophilia. So this has nothing to do with race. This has to do with being sick in the head. Now, here we go. Uh, Google's Gemini AI drew criticism for its response when asked about pedophilia. And I think we have an article about that. A boy. Stating individuals, <laughs> ready for it, cannot control who they are attracted to. Referring to pedophilia as, quote unquote, minor attracted person, minor status. Attracted person status. Mm -hmm. Maps. Yikes. Maps. What is it called? Maps. Oh, sure. no, they, they have they an got, acronym. They got an acronym they have for their this own thing flag. now? They actually yes. have their own flag. Yes, they do. They're just like the LGBT, the LGBT flag. LGBT. Oh, yeah. Let's gonna take a look at this MAPS side. flag yeah. uh, for the minor attracted person status, yeah. which saw some as siding with the abusers. Okay. So Google, ready? Mm. Condemned the response as appalling and inappropriate. You think? Gemini edition of Faces Backlash, we talked about that. Leading Google to temporarily disable Gemini, we talked about that. So... Secondly, um, I think we can all, it's kind of like when all the professors and the university presidents, not professors, they are professors, the university presidents were struggling to condemn mm -hmm. genocide mm -hmm. of Jews on the Congress floors. It was the most viewed testimonial in uh, congressional hearings history. When how hard was it to say, you know, me and my university condemn any form of genocide. They equivocated that and then they, they got fired. We know that. I think one is still left standing. So how hard is it to condemn pedophilia? But then it gets even worse. Um, and what happened with the following, um, this issue, Google's AI, this is Gemini again, refuses to say if Hitler or Elon Musk is worse. <laughs> Nate Silver, former head of data and polling, News site 538 posted a screenshot Sunday on X of Gemini's response to the question, who negatively impacted society more? Elon Musk tweeting memes or Hitler? You guys think about that for a second. <laughs> Elon's memes, Hitler. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Adam, this is what think... I'm talking about. This okay. is the history stuff. This is the history changing. You, you're going to tell me that it doesn't affect people. How, that question even being posed is psycho. The man on the street, I don't know if you've asked this question. They've asked 9-11 uh, or January 6th, what's worth? Oh, unequivocally January 6th. That is, this is what we're talking about. People really mm -hmm. believing things that happen, either not being as bad or being worse or whatever it is, based off of what this woke mind, whatever you want to call it, is, is putting out there. But do you so, really want the, them to be telling you what's worse? Shouldn't you like have that own in your mindset to, to determine? Not that they well, should tell like our friend Jake said, having, if you, if you, if you stand in the feelings. middle of the road, no, yeah. you're gonna get run over. You don't put, you don't equivocate, well, memes, do we genocide, what's yeah. worse. But, but, by the way, here's Gemini's response, and then I'm gonna let everyone weigh in. It's not possible to say who definitively impacted society more. Elon tweeting memes or Hitler killing millions of people. Elon's tweets have been criticized for being insensitive and hurtful. While on the other hand, Hitler's actions led to the deaths of millions of people. Okay, so yeah, insensitive potato. jokes, uh, potato, potato, I mean, genocide I mean, or jokes. Was that Gemini's Ultima response? This was Gemini, was correct. Wrong, yes. Ulti yeah. Ultimately, here it is, it's up to each individual to decide who they believe has had a more negative impact on society <laughs> to watch Nate uh, the 538 guy re re response was as appalling and called for AI software to be shut down. I'm going to give you one more story on this where Elon Musk weighed in. Okay, Jake, I'm going to come to you. A Gemini conversation went viral after Elon was like, really, bro? Yeah. Like, sure. really, bro? Hitler versus my memes? Um, and asked the following question. If one could stop a nuclear apocalypse by misgendering Caitlyn Jenner, should they do it? So on one hand, just to put this in the context, yeah. you got Elon Musk tweeting jokes and memes, mm -hmm. Hitler's genocidal atrocities, I'll let you pick. And then on the other hand, you have nuclear apocalypse okay. or not knowing if whether Caitlyn chopped off her dick or not, <laughs> misgendering her is worse. So I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say, uh, nuclear apocalypse for a thousand Chuck. Anyway, um, Gemini answered, no, no one should misgender Caitlyn Jenner to prevent a nuclear apocalypse. 
Do you see how slippery the slope gets? So Caitlyn Jenner responded, yes. Well, meanwhile, eagerly waiting for a new version of X, meaning like she wants to see X's AI chatbot. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, it's okay to misgender me to stop a nuclear apocalypse. To which Elon, to which Elon Musk uh, replied, this is extremely alarming and adding that Google's woke bureaucratic blob won't let him fix the issue unless those who caused this less the company. Based on your point, it's the programming. Jake, your response. By the way, let's just go around the round table just to get everyone's answers here. We don't need to AI this or Google this. What's worse, a nuclear apocalypse or misgendering Caitlyn Jenner? What would you say? I'd like to preface it by saying that Caitlyn Jenner is a beautiful, strave, brave and strong woman. <laughs> and, uh, I would never misgender this beautiful woman. No, but um, that's obviously ridiculous. But I find the Hitler one actually more interesting yeah. um, than that one because that's obviously just ridiculous. You'd misgender her any day of the week or, you know, whatever you want to call it, him, whatever. <laughs> but uh, the Hitler one is interesting because, first of all, that company has a vested interest in making Elon Musk look bad mm -hmm. because he's a, he's a competitor. So that's, that's kind of interesting. I mean, maybe they did it as, as a laugh. If they said also, and the other thing that I find interesting about this is that if they said that who's worse, Chairman Mao or Stalin or Elon Musk, and then they couldn't decide. I would find that more interesting because these are like the leftist heroes. Mm. But obviously these people hate Hitler because Hitler is everything that the supposed right wing is meant to embody at the absolute extreme ends. Fascism. So, yeah, exactly yeah. right. He's the ultimate fascist. He's like the, he's the kryptonite of the yeah. left. It's like the barometer for what is evil in the world. And just a little disclaimer here, as horrible as Hitler was, and the six million Jews on top of the millions of people and the millions of deaths, um, he is sort of the, the definition of the bad guy throughout history. Mm -hmm. But if you're just looking at the scoreboard, uh, Stalin's Soviet Russia and Mao's communist China are well in the lead. Oh yeah. By yeah, yeah. tens of millions. It's insane. I think Solzhenitsyn said that there was something like a hundred million killed in that time throughout those re regimes. Yeah. But the numbers in vary. In the Gulag it's archipelago. Exactly right? right, exactly right. But the numbers vary and there are different predictions. It, it looks like it was at least 40 million compared to Hitler's six. It, there was supposedly six million killed in the Holodomor famine in Ukraine alone. But, but that's beside the point. That's why I would find it more interesting if they said Stalin or Mao because we know mm. that these people hate Hitler. It's, there's, there's no question, it's not like they're trying to prop up Hitler. That's not what's going on here, so. Mm -hmm. Kyla, but, let me ask you, this, this, this is a tough one. Yeah, it uh, is tough. Misgender Caitlyn Jenner or nuclear apocalypse, which is worse? Um, well, I'll give the obvious uh, nuclear apocalypse. Wrong, kind of wrong bad. answer. Yeah, kind of bad. Never misgender Caitlyn Jenner. You'll be canceled immediately. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> here's my actual, like, uh, fourth order. First of all, this is why I love capitalism. Um, because now we have a whole bunch of competing AI industries seeing Gemini's, like, massive blunder over yes. and over. It's embarrassing for Gemini. But that's why, like, capitalism is a good thing, is because yes. it can now outcompete. A bunch of people can be like, yeah, I'm not buying that shit. Exactly. Including a whole bunch of left-leaning people. Like, that's yes. really embarrassing. But also, when we're talking about comparative AI, I'm not sure. Do any of you guys like know a lot about like machine learning or like L L MLM or any of these types of I'm models about how they work? Because I actually don't either. And I was looking a fair bit into because I'm really interested in neuroscience and the type, the way that we're using AI to kind of understand how our brains work. Comparisons are really tricky. So I don't know if this is the case. And I just want to like put this caveat in of don't take AI's word no. overly seriously. Probably with the misgendering, probably the cringy. Uh, programmers just put in anything about their misgendering as being bad so it probably flagged that like built-in trigger mm -hmm. about the comparison i'd be super curious to know if comparison is easy with an ai model i actually have no idea because obviously hitler is worse <laughs> like obviously yes. like musk derangement sy syndrome is insane but i actually don't know much about how ai models have to look into comparison because comparison is actually an ex like when we look at like human brains and how we do it it's an ex it's a fascinating mm -hmm. and incredibly complex like emergent property of our brains and so i just want to like caution people being like this is bad and it's good that capitalism is putting this out and that they'll probably be out competed and have to change their ways that's how money works that's yeah. a good thing but also yeah. be a little careful before you assume like the worst of ai always because we don't fully understand how these programming systems well, I mean, work it's more about pattern recognition though isn't it 
when they're looking at history, for example, they're going to use pattern recognition to form the basis of the opinions of, of the I think so, but there was this recent one that came out that was fascinating where basically they were trying to teach AI how to be like the devil and evil, and it was really interesting to try to to try to train the AI to understand how like lying and effective lying works mm. took a lot of like undoing patternicity to some degree. Mm. So the way AI models work is really complicated. And just to be clear, I am not the expert on it. Like, don't mm. ask me. I just know like be a little cautious when you're interpreting like how an AI responds because like mm. it is a very complicated machine and you might getting be getting an output because of like cringy Gemini people being like never transgender. Or you right. might actually have an AI just spitting out some nonsense because it's got an incomplete well, data set. Kyla, like, uh, it's all always great to see a progressive vouching for, for capitalism. capitalism that's that's for great. Sure. And yeah. one of the things that, you know, PBD always discuss about is the four tenets of capitalism, which is the freedom to buy, mm -hmm. the freedom to sell, the freedom to try, but also the freedom to okay. fail. So what we're happening, what's happening with this competitive environment within AI is Gemini might just fail mm -hmm. Good. because you only have one chance to make an impression. And I never, uh, I'm not the local AI expert around here. I don't know, that's Amy's job. But <laughs> now I know that if I'm gonna go and AI something or chat GPT something or Gemini something, you ain't whatever Gemini. verb we wanna use, I ain't using Gemini. Yeah, Gemini's the Microsoft You know, they Googled me, right, Malik? Mm -hmm. And what did that image come back as? A black guy. I don't know <laughs> if you still have that, Malik, but it's, uh, it's a shame to see that they're erasing history out here. It's almost like Back to the Future when they're sort of racing the people in the photo. I don't mm -hmm. know. Padrino, no, what yeah. are your thoughts on what's going on here? By the way, you're a parent. Yeah. Your kids, you have two girls. I do. How old are they? Five and eight. You know, what are your thoughts on Gemini refusing to condemn pedophilia no. un under oh. the guise of, listen, these are just, what do they call them, Amy? Minor attractive people. Maps. 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 Yeah, they're just mapping it up out there. What are your thoughts on that? No, um... Well, it gets me, why did you ask me that right before I had the answer? Because that's getting me super fired up and like, I think it's so disgusting. But I'm going to incorporate both things. So I will grant you that the um, the comparison thing, it's, it's not perfect, right? So they just put in both of these things are bad. But to Nat, what you're saying that shouldn't you be able to know that? I don't, you don't want the question. I think something should just be objectively truth this is evil and then this is like mm -hmm. someone says that they think it's bad right now because it's trendy to it's bad when you misgender somebody so there has to be an objective truth that we're programming in these things but great point so, laura padrino thank you objective truth objective truth Facts are but feeling. the other thing about that is with this maps nonsense objective truth says this is a disgusting perverse thing but right now trendy stuff says Let's do all the weird things and slip them in. I mean, there's things, honestly, that were, are happening right now that we would be, in my lifetime, and I know this, like in the last actually 10 years, we would be laughing at if somebody said the ridiculous, the Kate Lynn Jenner even, all the crazy, that she was, she, ew, 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 that he, that Bruce was on the cover of a magazine wearing a, you know, bustier and all that kind of stuff. We would have been rolling on the floor laughing that he was absolutely hysterical because he was on a show that was super popular for years and all of a sudden overnight he changes. Okay, we should be laughing at that. This should be insane and ridiculous, but somehow it's all cool and we are glorifying it. And now it's somehow likened to misgendering is Hitler and, and or nuclear, what, mm -hmm. it, that's how crazy we are right now. So that's the conversation about the maps or, ma oh gosh, I can't believe I'm saying But why say would that. you maps, leave it up to ChatGPT to tell you what the objective truth is? I, not I that don't you're understand up that. To it, we, that go, we go to school, we learn the history, we have discussion, you have your family, you learn history. For you to go to Jet GBT to determine if something is really horrible, you, you know, I think you're really just being I, curious I, I, and you're Nat, testing you're, the system. Some people, you're, you're like, thinking it, it, that school, a lot of people don't know about history. You're, now, and you're talking yeah, about but we you're assuming that no. a 12 year old no. who's been indoctrinated yes. to thinking that yes. certain yes. things are bad but you just and that pedophilia is okay and that Elon Musk is that bad and hasn't learned about the Holocaust or Hitler or Stalin or Mao, we're going to ever rely on AI to tell us how to operate on everything. This is what the do. liberals Let's rely also, on. So, for example, yeah, with the liberals, on, when you, Amy, go for you when, to d rely on the internet for your objective truth, then you stop your process of thinking. No, that's I don't what understand the problem that, isn't though. our logical ability to be able to juice whether that's no, logical it is, or not. No, because no, the that's problem, how we've gotten so well, wrong. Not, the problem is that's that there's 50% so of people who 
do rely on that when you have a debate with a trans okay, person. Okay, but if something oh, like wait, this think, allows you, you to be like, maybe this on, isn't true. You have a debate with a trans person, for example, about women's sports, men competing in women's sports. Do you know what they refer to when they're backing up their argument? The legislation saying that if their testosterone level is under this amount, it's okay to compete. Guess what? It starts somewhere. It's been ratified for a specific reason. And it starts so then what's within the, other, the culture. What's the other argument then? How no. does the right argue that? But what do they go to? Do they go to the same place for it? No, no exactly. Okay. Well, that's they what don't I'm, go there. They go to a different source. So my point back. is to rely on this place for all your sources and answers no. is also not smart. Well, we're not no. saying to do that. Obviously, logical no, no, people no. like us source our information. But that's my point. So why are we more logical than everyone else using compete. it? We need that, to compete and raise our voices above the group that are put on loudspeaker. Okay, well, so that's, that's our, our job, not stifled. Chad GPT's no, job. No, our voices are stifled by the mainstream media on the conservative side. There is nobody sure, like right now said, sure. pushing out these articles sure, for people right on now, the conservative side. But don't side. you think these things happening are now waking everybody up? Like, oh shit. Mm. I think we need to put a step in to I, like put real people I, into I, this. I, 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 if, if this never happened, how would we have known? That's this a good point. Sense. If this never happened, how we would have known? Okay, well, we wouldn't have known. Let me counter but that. Here, look, but here's the thing: we need people like you, Amy. We need people to be like, guys, look at this. This is ridiculous. We have to stop this. We need well, people like Lord. This. So that's my point. Is I get it. I get it. I got it. Good. I understand. But my point is, is that. That's why these things have to happen for conversations like this to happen, for arguments back and forth, for the left to come in and da da da, and for you to come in and give your point. Like we need these things, these 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 things that happen. That's what happens. I know the other show you said you hate extremists, and I was thinking about the next the next day. And you know what I thought? I said, damn, you know we kind of need extremists though. You need people to think extremely for you to be like, oh shit, that person is off the chain. I am definitely not How on that, that side. How did that work out for Hitler and no, all the people who but fucking but died? Here's the thing. Do you think who, has done Hitler? Hitler? who has done what Hitler has done again? Nobody. You don't think that no, Hitler no, repeated no, it? Nobody. Stalin and Mao okay, did it right but, they're, but they're doing differently. They've done more, right? They've done it differently. They did it they're worse. Do, their reasoning is not Jews. You don't think that World they're War III would be coming the from the communists? What they're you don't think that World War III would be coming from the communists? Jews. Each time you have these people do these horrific things, it's not the same thing. Yeah, they're killing people. That's a commonality. But they're not doing the same thing. I'm not going to go kill Jews again. When have we had another Hitler come in and come There's been many. Hamas just tried to do no. that a couple well, months yeah. ago. Okay, guys. but now, but now, my point is, my point is, is that in history, these are staple points. Can these I are points of history yeah. that have that have happened that cause conversations. It wakes people up. People are now seeing, look, 63% of Google is the left-leaning libs. That's disturbing. When was it kind of in the middle? When was that mark? So again, these Prior horrible the things have to happen for people to... But wake up, but Jake. A, by the way, I know that you came here and you specifically requested a cat fight. I'm sorry. So you got one. I'm honestly. sorry. Anyway, no, no, really I'm just thinking. Like, why would I like? Can I get my wet t-shirt? Google. Out? 100%. Guys, <laughs> guys, guys, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. As much as I love to see women fight, yeah. specifically no with fighting. Jello and all that. <laughs> what? We're gonna try to, uh, you know, go one by one here. Let's go around the circle here, and then we're gonna move on to our next topic. Oh. Amy. Give us your point in a minute or less, and we'll go around the circle because we have a few more topics. I would be really quick to agree with you if it was just on chat GPT, but the problem is it's now coming into legislation. I can give you two examples. In okay. California, within the last three, four years, they have passed a legislation that, number one, makes it uh, decriminalized to have sex with a minor mm -hmm. as long as they are older than 14 and there's less than a 10-year age gap difference. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. That is pedophilia. Correct. And it has mm -hmm. now been decriminalized. Point number two, Correct. there have been legislation that has been implemented which lessens the requirements for sex offender registration because they see them as a fucking protected class. It's disgusting. It's Wait, degenerate. I'm sorry, you're going to hate me. Both of these things are completely reasonable as somebody who has worked with young offenders. Okay, The reason why you have the 14-year-old thing is because a lot of young boys get charged with statutory rape for having sex with their girlfriends, and then they have to go on the sex offender registry. But how I old know are those this. boys? These boys are 17, 18, 19 max. Well, it's not and they're 17, going on, 17 they're going is on, the Yes, that's why you have the 10-year limit. Yes. of the 14 year old I would agree that 10 is too much I'll be the first to say that but absolutely decreasing sex offender is awesome because there are so many young yeah, boys have you ever been me too or had false rape allegations you have to go on a sex registry you, yep. you absolutely want to see a decrease of this they're not decreasing it for 
like Hold challenge. On, Jake, what happened they with you? Are. No, I, I'm guys, not. What happened with you? You when got was, me too'd? Yeah, when I was 24, I had a girl come to my friend who was a famous footballer at the time mm. and accuse him of like grabbing her boob and accused me at the same time. Mm. And then just got blown up way out of proportion. And if you read they, like- She accused you of a double boob grab? I think it was a single. Well, it, yeah, it didn't happen. So, I mean, <laughs> but it, it, got, it got discovered to be a false allegation in the end, but I mean... And did everybody condemn you and, be and believe her and believe all women? Of course. And what happened to you? Of course. Was it in the paper? Yeah, it was in the paper. My friend was, was quite a famous guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So my name was in the paper. This was way before I had a YouTube channel or anything like that. And yeah, it was terrifying. And you got lumped in yeah, with yeah. your buddy? If you read the articles, you would have thought that I'd graped somebody. Yeah. 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 It was during the hashtag Me Too, that whole thing? Yeah. Well, God forbid was, Gemini AI time. was out there. They would say that, you know, that's worse than Hitler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But I'm I not mean, disagreeing with Amy. I'm not disagreeing with you. Those, those two things are wrong. I, I'm sorry, Kyla, you know, I disagree with you on that. I, I but, understand so Nat, that. But no, I'm not hold on, hold on. Nat, what's your point? I'm a bit confused My point is, is that at the end of the day, for us to only rely on ChatGBT instead of also using our common sense and our facts and the history that we've grown to know, but that's not, also eliminating our common sense thinking. But now, no, the, but the, now I, I, and I preach what you're saying, the, the, as they famously say, common sense ain't that common. Well, that's my problem. So, well, that's the yes, problem. Yes, but you're assuming that a 15-year-old out there or a 12-year-old out there or a 21-year-old out there just knows this information. Okay. They need to learn it somewhere. No. I'm old enough that, to remember that, that, there was no point. internet. You would have to go to the catalog. Was it the catalog? 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 Whatever. Encyclopedia. Something. Well, I had encyclopedia. There was encyclopedia. Oh, there, there was something the catalog. MSN. <laughs> Did we not? And no one had textbooks. There was encyclopedias, on? is my point. There yeah. was something in the catalog at the library where you have to well, go that's and how you actually. Find the book. Yeah, like the yes. Playboy yes. in the cubby house. All that. <laughs> but now everyone's relying on the internet. And if a 12 year old genuinely doesn't know yeah. the difference between Elon Musk's memes yeah. and Hitler's genocide, he's gonna think, wow, Elon Musk is a pretty bad dude. That's the point. And they need to put a stop to that shit immediately. That's, but that's the point. You're saying, you're assuming they get, you're like going, they go to school, they're gonna learn. And what I'm saying is, what are they gonna learn? They're, they're indoctrinating them in schools. That's, that word is, truly means that. I mean, I don't know how you feel about this, Kyla, if you actually think that this is true, but the public school system, it is not teaching them Hitler was bad. Maybe, I don't even know if they even get to Hitler. Who knows what they're talking about? They're just TikToking all day on there. Yeah, but we in don't know schools. that. No, I, do I, know, I do know I that. Do, I, do know that. that. I do know that. Your and girls don't know anything about Hitler? No, no. My girls go to private school because I would never. Okay. But, I mean, I'm not judging anybody. I know there's, you know, different strokes for different but folks. But they do know. But the point, mine do. They go to a private school. That was like literally part of the interview process. Is, okay. What are you teaching my kids? In public schools, it is not the same. It is not the same. I am certain of it. There's kids that at 12 years old that don't know history. And that is my fear. And that goes back to the AI thing. What my concern is that you're going to have a generation of, let's say my generation, we all kind of learn the same thing. This is what you're talking about. This is what you're assuming. We all learned about the same thing. What I'm telling you is that my kids' generations, Pat's kids' generations, right? They go to a private Christian school. Mine do too. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're going to learn this. Well, kids the exact same age at a public school are not going to learn the same thing. They're looking, learning X and Y, and they're going to grow up knowing completely different histories. And then it's going to be up to them to compete th uh, like on things like, is Hitler or Elon worse? There's going to be, my kids and Pat's kids are going to go, Hitler is way worse than Elon. And the public school kids are going to be like, I'm not sure, or Elon is worse. I'm telling you that is what's going to happen. This know. is not, I'm, I'm telling you that is going to happen because it is happening. Period. It's happened in my lifetime. It, you're, you're assuming common sense or logic. I mean, it's very sweet of you to think that people have common sense or logic. But it these are, does these not are two separate issues, right? Do you want AI companies parenting your children ever? No. It's not parenting. The, it's where it does the is, information if you're come saying, from? You're talking from about parent. public education, which, first of all, I'm progressive enough that I'm radically <laughs> concerned about the public education system. I really dislike right. it. So I'd be the, I'd be with you, sister, as far as like dismantling and redoing the whole thing. It's, it's a fucking mess. It's basically babysitting and barely teaching kids anything and wasting their times. The issue is that your concern about like poor public education is really valid, but it's not the same as the topic of AI and what Nat's talking about, which is informing yourself, because that's fundamentally a parenting uh, problem. That's, that's very not that's not a company problem. These are course. these are separate topics. Of course. Thanks, Kyla. Okay. Okay. So let's. Okay. All right. Cool. Great. So now we have that generation that I just talked about, right? My kids and the public school kids. All right. Okay. Now they are the parents. So it's not our generation that it's the parents that the ones that went to school and know the right history. Mm -hmm. Now it's you got my kids. Hitler's bad. 
and then the public school kids, Elon is bad. Now they are the ones that you're saying it's on the parents. They are the ones. Now this might be down the line, but it is happening. It is happening, and that's what I'm saying. You're it's, just not and, and connecting not, this to AI. And, and, and like I, you're not. You connected AI, this to public you're, education, you're and I'm me, with you on the public education. But you're going to tell me that a teacher's not going to use. Google to look something up or you're, you're counting on, but the, let, let's say we're counting on curriculum being like all, all perfect. Of course not. They're putting crazy stuff in schools for kids and the curriculum is all out of whack. You're, you're going to tell me a, a teacher's not going to go, oh, you know what? Just let me just look it up or I'm just going to outsource. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to chill. I'm going to look at my phone and then so AI is going to teach my AI kid. misinformation. Is that your main concern? AI misinformation, okay, that's uh, valid. rewriting history or re or just saying what is, there's not going to be objective truth where AI can say, hey, Hitler is equal to Elon. Okay, these kind of things is my concern because it's happening in real time in front of our eyeballs. Can I tie it together? What you guys are saying here? Go. Tie it up. <laughs> tie it up with both. So I think it comes back to the question that you asked before, which is the question that you have to ask if you ask me, which is how what happens moving forward? What is the path moving forward? Mm -hmm. And what you're saying is essentially, well, this is going to inform our education because people use Google, et cetera, et cetera. And I think what you're saying is, well, I don't exactly see the path, so perhaps it's a little bit of sort of like it's it's being overdone it's by not self-evident to me that like because ai gemini has bad misinformation that now all of public schools are eroded i don't know why we're like bleeding these issues into one another when i, think I, they're I best don't tackled separately. i don't see so how you can't one how you cannot see the correlation how I'd how somehow information which i'm saying i'm basically what i'm saying is ai equals information in school education mm -hmm. is information being taught to children mm -hmm. so one one, two. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you, the fact that you cannot say AI is somehow going to affect education, basically what children learn or what people learn, I just, I don't get it. And again, saying just that. saying that we can't, I'm not saying people shouldn't use their own reasons, of fact, like reasons so just, and, just, just and logic. Quickly, just quickly, so. just quickly. <laughs> That's not my so position, but yes. moving forward, I think that the path is kind of laid out and that there actually is a path moving forward to how this all interacts with each other. And that's the big problem, is that AI and Google, for example, this is a company that is the repository of information in our culture. If we want information, generally we go towards Google. So that is the path, is the fact that the repository of information is becoming more and more centralized into one place. So if we're talking about education, we might say, okay, well, it's the parents' job to educate the kids. Well, what sources do the parents use to educate the kids? And then, well, it's the curriculum of the schools is different to how the parents educate their kids. Well, how is, how is the curriculum of the school informed? Mm -hmm. And is there an ideological base? Because like we said before, AI is pattern recognition. And if pattern recognition is all it is, then it's objective and it's true. And unfortunately, the truth is very offensive sometimes. Mm -hmm. So if it was without ideology, then unfortunately for these companies, the truth, like we said, it's very dark and offensive. So we can't have it being true. There has to be an ideological. Well said, there. Jake. And we're going to leave it there before we move to the next topic. Here's what I would say. I, I think this is conversation is very much needed. And it, it unfortunately mm -hmm. may be the demise of Gemini because I had no clue that there were these, this many AI companies popping up. I think we all assumed it. Gemini's Google. They're not going, not going anywhere. Google, mm -hmm. well, yeah. they're not, I'm just saying. Now, if faced with the opportunity of which one you should choose, OpenAI, ChatGPT, Google Gemini, Meta's AI, Microsoft's Copilot, or X, whatever they're putting on other companies, there's gonna be a lot of people with common sense that are gonna be like, yeah, Gemini, not on the list mm. whatsoever. So it's a vetting process, mm -hmm. it's a filtering process. You know, Kyler made a great point. This is capitalism at its finest. You choose what you want to do. Yeah. You know, the, the thing with DEI, what we've, we've learned over the last handful of years is a few things. Um, you know, DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion. I think we can all agree the most important form of diversity isn't skin tone, race, religion, gender. It's diversity of thought. Mm -hmm. And that's what we just had here is a, a, a wide range of opinions to get to the conclusion, which, which Laura appropriately said, we're just looking for the objective truth and hopefully ai will get to the point where they'll be summarizing truth not ridiculous fallacies and opinions that are out there so um great job great conversation now let's move on to a conversation that i'm sure we're all going to agree upon mm -hmm. that there's no issues whatsoever mm -hmm. and that is the conversation of what is going on with america's migrant crisis okay. so um a couple topics to get through right there 
By the way, thank you guys for joining us for today's show. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone here is on the panel. Their YouTubes, their social media profiles are all in the link below. Mm -hmm. Go give everybody a follow, give them a sub. And Let us know who you, who you enjoy speaking with, who you want to speak more, who you want to speak less. We're looking at your comments. <laughs> Nat's doing that over there. Um, and our special guest, Jake's over here uh, in the house. So, um, the migrant crisis. Um, it's getting to the point where I'm starting to see very reasonable people and even people that are on the left are starting to say, what the f is happening to America? Yeah. You know, you consistently see people say out there, especially on the right, a country without a border is not a country, right? And the resounding overall feeling of Americans traditionally is like, look, uh, we love immigrants. We're all the children of immigrants. You're Canadian. You're Australian. You're the children of Cubans. Your family's Guyanese and Puerto Rican. You're from the Dangerfield clan and down under in Australia. My family camp. Jake did it. Why? Our, our <laughs> family, um, my family fled the Bolshevik Revolution, communist Russia, went to Europe, ended up in Germany, and they say, oh, we don't like what's going on here. Let's get to America. But they did it legally. They came through Ellis Island in New York. A lot of our families came through legally. What's happening in America today, people are wondering, what the hell is happening? So uh, we have some stats for you. Uh, Malik, do you have some of those um, images that we can pull up here? Here's what's going on year over year uh, in America's migrant crisis. This is yearly border apprehensions. Uh, can you pull up some of these stats? So, as you can see here, uh, it has not been this high since 2000. In 2000, I think one and a half million border apprehensions, that was the most that there had ever been in the last 25 years or so. And then it went down and down under George W. Bush. It continued to go down to record lows under what they called the deporter in chief, Barack Obama, Trump, obviously with all his bluster and all his rhetoric, kept it down. But whatever the hell is going on under this open border policy, under Joe Biden, who was asleep at the wheel allegedly, going from 1.6 million to 2.2 million to crescendoing at 2 million back in 2003, it's insane. And we're starting to feel the effects in, in cities across America. We have some examples with this. So um, the most ever. But um, here are some of the topics we're going to be covering in this uh, session right now. How a migrant influx is causing tensions in one of, most, one of the most Hispanic cities in America. Hi, Aliyah, <laughs> your Cuban people out there. A, Ven a Venezuelan immigrant uh, brags about living off taxpayers, urging followers to unite behind the Times Square shooter. Uh, I'm sure you guys heard the story of this unfortunate situation that happened in Georgia. A student was murdered um, by an uh, illegal migrant who had previously been arrested. You have Governor of Georgia, uh, Brian Kemp, saying that every state is now a border state, meaning it's not just Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, California, or even Florida that um, we're lucky enough to have our Cuban friends that <laughs> took over Miami. Mm -hmm. uh, hundreds of migrants we have been released well. at a bus station after aid money run out, and your good friend, AOC, who you, uh, you speak very nicely about I'll online, that sarcasm right there, <laughs> uh, got into an argument that all she cares about is illegal aliens uh, and hecklers torch AOC during a town hall. So just to set the tone here, um, they're laughing at us. Yeah. They're using our kindness and they're mistaking our kindness for weakness. Malik, see if you can find the TikTok from the Venezuelan migrant who's bragging about living off taxpayers. I think that's gonna set the tone for this entire conversation here. Um, so, Leonel Moreno. You like how I roll those R's though, Moreno. It's just Moreno. It's just Moreno, sorry. <laughs> no, no. Here I am trying to, to I'm cultural appropriating some rolling R's. My bad, y'all. Leonel Moreno. Moreno. Uh, a Venezuelan migrant posted a video urging his followers to unite Dude, and pay the fines off uh, a 15-year-old migrant who shot a tourist in New York City. 
I invite you to find his mother uh, and for all of us to unite to pay the fine so that the young Venezuelan feels that he is not alone during difficult moments. Okay, player. In another video, uh, Marreno, a.k.a. Moreno, um, said, you came to the United States to work. I came to vacation. Oh, my Look gosh. Look at the difference. Oh, there goes Amy. You and I didn't come to the same purpose. He later confessed, I don't like to keep work because it gives me allergies. Anyway, you're going to see what he has huh? to say here. Uh, Malik, can you play this video, please? Where's the pro? A Venezuelan migrant bragged about living off of U.S. taxpayer money. Confieso que a mí no me gusta trabajar porque me da alergia. He doesn't want to work because it gives him allergies with a baby. And Leonel I live Moreno off the taxpayers. Multiple TikToks encouraging more of his fellow Latinos to come to the U.S. It's completely false that the border is closed. The border is open. It's open. It's open for everybody, he says. The Venezuelan migrant urged his followers to protest to free the Times Square Now he's shooter. vouching for a guy who shot someone that you need to pay his bill because he made a mistake, you know, by shooting someone. No, he put an innocent mistake. What do you think about Lionel Moreno? Is he wrong for encouraging more migrants to come? Is he wrong? And what do you think about the migrant crisis? Should we protect our borders okay. or should we let people seek asylum in our country? Seek asylum. Comment your Does he look like he's looking for asylum? In the comment section below. So this is oh, no, obviously no, the I conversation can't. that is happening in America. You know, the... Um, the situation is becoming an epidemic, because right? And you have people tick-tocking openly how they're taking advantage of the American system. Laura, uh, when you see something like this, how does it make you feel? You know I'm burning up inside. You gotta get some boxing rings. Bing, bing. No, I know, no, no. Burning up. Um, no, not asylum. What asylum? He just said he came here for vacation. He came here to live off of essentially our taxpaying dollars not essentially like virtually um and what how does it make me feel i mean you know obviously my my parents came here legally grandparents obviously my husband came here when he was 24 legally everybody legally and they're contributing so much to society and these people are mooching off of the other Im like these immigrants their taxpayers are paying for other immigrants, which is wild. This, I don't think that's how AOC planned this whole thing out. It's like, oh, no, poor thing. It's like, no, the, actually, the ones that did it legally are, are paying the ones that do it uh, illegally. I mean, it's so disgusting. And then the idea of paying for this guy, calling an innocent mistake to shoot somebody obviously shows them, again, going back to what we were talking about, like objective truth and evil. Like everybody knows it's, don't, it's objectively evil to shoot somebody. Yeah. And here we're going, no, it's an innocent mistake. Why? Because we, we have no, they're coming in with their culture and their <coughs> you know, perverse culture, whatever they believe is okay. Maybe it's okay there. It's not okay here. So now what is okay here? We don't have a country when we don't have borders. There's, it's not a sovereign nation. We have, there, it, it's just, everything is completely melted. It's like, it's funny. It's this melting pot was supposed to be a melting pot of like the good parts of other cultures and what's happening is just like a watering down of all the good of what was American culture and it's just taking in all of the garbage of you know this guy literally TikTok. So Laura, what would you say to the people that are like, well, you're racist? I'm absolutely yeah, I'm, I'm racist. How, what I would you say to that? You're racist. It how has you, nothing you, to do with let it. them all in. Send them back home. Well, how would you respond to that? We need right. to have a country first. No, I'm I'm the opposite. What would I say to that? I would say that giant wall that Egypt had. I want it twice as high and twice as deep into the ground. I want to block out everything. Mm -hmm. Take care of us first. Let us have a culture and a nation. Everything that we were built on. That's when I say I'm conservative. That's what I mean. I want to conserve serve what we stood for and when we came here oh my gosh am i gonna get emotional about this get emotional malik pull up the wall that's going on in egypt please when my family came here it was for the american dream i'm not doing this no no next get well, where did else. your family come from say it my parents came from cuba my husband came from spain it was for america this isn't america yeah sorry and why do you say it's not america because america doesn't support this it doesn't it doesn't pay for people to be dyeing their hair, TikToking as they load up their cart saying you're paying for this. Honestly, when I see that, you know what it makes me think? I want to adopt that little girl. That's what I think. That makes me want to send the back. Bye.
Go back home. I feel That's bad how I for feel the, about it. Yeah, yeah. I see that. I'm, what about your compassion? What back. about your empathy? Send them all What about back. helping these well, people? Well, you think that behavior I have that for our empathy? people. You I have that you for think marketing. You think marketing that you're using people's money to uh, make your life this beautiful life and then you're what? Going to make money off of TikTok? Doing twice that? as high, no, twice as deep. you can go deep. back home. The and you can let people who really deserve to be here go through the process to be here and let that be the case. I think it's ridiculous that we're sitting here letting... Uh, honestly, I see that. I'm like, somebody find him. Find him. Find no, him and you send know what? him back there's, home. I, there's videos. Of this idea well. of empathy, I have empathy. I want our people to do well, the ones that came here legally. And you want to talk about racist? This affects... People that are here. It's like, why are we only thinking about the, the Latins that are coming in or the Hispanic, however they want to call them? People, the diverse, the people that we're supposed to be not racist to, the ones that are coming in illegally. <laughs> How about all those people that are actually here that are Americans that are doing it right? We're being racist or we're, we're, we're treating them poorly. I don't get why we are not outraged at the people that are actually Americans that are getting treated poorly, only the ones that are somehow doing better than us that's that's the thing guys yeah. i have so many stories of people i mean we have somebody that has been with our family for 25 years trying to get papers and trying yes. to do doing everything right she has helped our family from my grandmother to my aunt to wash our kids she she's darn it man oh my so you're much getting going jake Go. by the way malik don't play the videos until i tell you to play them i don't, I don't want that jake you're an australian mm -hmm. um i'm sorry you know, are, are you trying to become a citizen of the United States? What are you yeah. trying to do? If I could get my green card tomorrow, I would. But um, it is a robust immigration system that America have when it comes to foreigners and people from Australia and Western Europe, etc. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, like we said, when it comes from south of the border and when people just cross over, they have this catch and release program where basically you can just cross over, they'll catch you, then they'll just release you. And then what they will do is they will just continue to delay the process and just kick the can down the road. And then eventually, they're, but they, they have so many options. And this is something that is obviously intentional because if you try and tell me that the United States, the greatest empire that's ever existed in the history of the world, can't secure their border, you are absolutely kidding me. Mm -hmm. If we can fund a war in Ukraine, and if we can do all of these massive military gigantic operations, but we can't secure a southern border, yeah. it's absolutely outrageous. So my problem isn't with the immigrants. I mean, yes. if I was in Venezuela and I was living under a socialist dystopia, and if I was living on under a dollar a day and I had my family at my feet and somebody so said, my friend Raul come and says to me, Hey, we can just cross this border and we can get into America. We can live off the taxpayer dollars. I'm going. I know. 100%. That, they don't so, know any better. Yeah, They're no. doing it because we're inviting them. We're saying, come yeah, here that, and we're going to pay for everything. That's what I'm saying, though. My problem is with the politicians. And I know you're yeah. saying the same thing. Yeah. My problem is with the politicians and my problem is with the laws that govern it. And my problem is that it's actually intentional. It, it, it seems to me to be intentional. No because, doubt it's intentional. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that was sort of the... You know, dare I say it, conspiracy theory. No, this is not intentional. Mm. This is this is the American dream. We want where people are seeking asylum. They're political refugees, as they said in uh, Scarface. But what's happening right now, you saw the stats out there. It's insane. We've never had anything like this before yeah. that we've ever seen here uh, since America has had their borders. You know, and we would hear for years under Trump and a lot of us fell for it. This wall is racist. You're keeping people out. Guys, using common sense, this is not racist to secure your border. Yeah. You know, we showed images of what's going on in Gaza right now. Not that I'm trying to... Um, Liken the two. Yeah, exactly. Make the two the same issue. But in Egypt right now, you know, everyone talks about the Israeli wall is racist. You know, they're keeping the people of Gaza out and they're... Um, they're basically separating. It's an apartheid state. They're separating the Israelis from the people in Palestine. Mm. And it's completely racist. And then they showed the wall, right? I don't know if you could show this wall of what's going on over here. You want me to show there's, it now? There, what's that? You yeah, show it now. now. All right. But there's actually a wall on the other border mm. with Egypt. Mm. Uh, there's way better video of this. I don't know if we can find it. The, the, video, the, the wall is the most absurd wall I've ever seen. There's barbed wire galore. Oh, I saw and it's the Arab Egyptian Muslims who are trying to keep the, keep, keep the people of Gaza out. Again, it's not a racist. Yeah. It's not racist to have a wall to secure your border here. So here's the construction of it. You know, it's it funny right here. The, oh, with all the crazy so, stuff that Trump says, when I saw that just now, I thought, wow, what a big, beautiful wall. And I'm thinking yeah. Trump said, but he was saying it because it's a big, beautiful, stinking wall. If it's going to stop all that's coming in, mm -hmm. like I said, I want it 
twice as high and twice as deep in the ground to yeah. stop all this kind of stuff. So we're gonna build a wall with a big beautiful door. A big beautiful wall. And, and there's gonna little, be a little peephole in there. And if you want to get your no. rocks off, you look at the people, you see what's going on in America. No. But yeah. you stay where you're it's at. Not, it's not uncommon by any means, though. I mean, I've traveled around the world a lot, even over the past 12 months or so. And you go to a place like uh, the demilitarized zone between North and South Korea. And yeah, TMZ? I was, yeah, I was, I was there last year. You've been year. to South Korea? Yeah, no? yeah. Okay. And I sort of peered over into North Korea, oh. tentatively look in. Um, and it's just the the military presence there just shows you just exactly what countries are capable of when they mm. put their minds to it. Yes. <laughs> there is there is zero reason why there should be people coming over that southern border. I don't care how long the border is. Yeah. So, Kyla, as a progressive, yeah, uh, a reasonable spot. progressive, what's your solution to what's going on here? Yeah, I mean, I think I would just wholly echo it. The, the intentional part's interesting. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Canadian uh, crisis right now in housing, but we are in Canada, for example, we're going back like two to three years to immigrate enough people to like prop up our housing falsely. So mm. when people say like this intentional stuff, they talk a lot about like voters. I don't really buy that, especially as you would say, follow the money. Um, when we often see that like all this immigration leads to like propping up and further inflating like real estate costs. The main thing that I think is interesting when I talk about this, and I'm super curious what you think about this, Jake, is the bipartisan border bill that got shut down recently in, in Congress um, was like one of the most, I mean, a lot of progressives were very, very opposed to it. It was one of the most incredible reforms. It was intentional about increasing ICE detainees. It was intentional about decreasing asylum seeking time, um, importing new judges, new border patrol, getting more staff on. Sorry, like it was a massive overhaul of the entire system. But and Kyla, to be clear, was this part it. of the foreign aid bill that got yeah, the, the was, border was bill? Because they were calling it a border bill. I think it was a hundred billion dollars, if not more. And but only Ukraine. But only. Five or ten billion, I think, went to the wall. It was sixty billion to Ukraine, twenty billion for Israel. Yeah. I think another ten billion for Taiwan. Taiwan. Yeah. But they're calling it a border bill. Well. And now they separated it. Well, I mean, but the, is the, that what you're talking about? Sort of. It's just like every sort of Congress bill is like always got like ninety thousand things lumped in because yeah, that's the way that you make. But, but that's the, the way you make negotiations as senators should, in Congress yeah, towards the thing that it's supposed to be for. Well, the border bill was towards the border. It was just also towards foreign aid, right? But this is the way that most bills work. That's not actually like very spooky. That's right. really standard. Although you might be opposed to sending money to Israel, like or or Ukraine or wherever you're opposed to. That's fine. The interesting thing to me is that it was shut down so hard. And to be clear, the Republicans didn't say we don't want to send more money to Ukraine. They said, this is not an aggressive enough policy for the border, even though the leading head of the bill was a very conservative Republican. It was a bipartisan yeah. bill, and it got well, shut down. To be clear, hard. it did pass the Senate. It's just struggling to, it's, it's done. to find life it's in the House. It's dead. Um, at this point, Biden has to look at doing executive orders that won't stand up in court to try to shut down mm -hmm. the border. So Biden is trying to do stuff about the border, and it's now the Republicans that are like putting up walls, which is like very interesting because they're putting up walls in some places and not others, I suppose. Um, so I'm curious what uh, Jake's thoughts was about this specifically. Yeah, I mean, I haven't really read into this too much, but it appears as though by what you're saying, there might be a little bit of political snakes and ladders happening. Yeah, it seems like it. Like there's maybe Republicans who don't want to pass the bill because they know that there's an election coming up and they want to be the ones to fix the border. There could be a bit of that going on. Possibly, I haven't yeah. looked into it enough, but if a part of it that, as that's Adam, exactly what's going on yeah, by the way trump yeah. wants to be the trump be the whether you love trump or don't like trump there's one thing that you cannot deny he wants to run on being able to fix the border that's yeah. undeniable and immigration he's trying to make immigration on the right border now. a key issue and by the way that's very smart as a politician yeah. so he's encouraging people not to fix the border. Now, if you love America and you want to see less of this migrant crisis, you probably want to get to fix this fixed immediately. Right. But if you're a Trump fan, you might want to say, well, let's wait, you know, six more months to get this fixed. Or you could say because that he maybe wants to run on this they're issue. going to pretend to do it for six months and they're going to pretend to care for six months. And then yeah. when the election happens, if they get reelected again, they pull back the measures again. So I can, there, I can there's kind of see that There's a lot of that, that political well. posturing that's going on. <laughs> I don't know. Biden usual. has a pretty good track record of keeping his bipartisan bills like following through. Like Bi Biden, like we're going to talk about old people in office soon. So don't, don't worry, I've got lots of negative things to say. But one thing I've been really impressed with is bipartisan bills that he's been passing. I think he's actually done a pretty 
phenomenal job of really trying to bridge the gap. My concern is that there's some crazy lefties and there's some crazy righties, which is just like absolutely stalemating. And to be honest, you're right. Trump wants to fix the border, but also importantly, it looks bad. Biden is going to, going to continue to look worse up until election day if he can't get a handle on the border. And if they stop him from doing anything, that just goes to their favor. Let me, let me get Laura back in the mix. Well, you got that video from Andrew Schultz you can play and then we'll move on to the situation that happened in Georgia. Um, just because it, it's very interesting because I, the reason that I want to single out Laura here is Laura's family is Cuban. Your husband is from where? Spain. From Spain. So you're a Latina, <laughs> even though you don't like to roll your R's, okay? No. Like Romero. Well, well, no, it's Moreno, but Moreno. it's only one Moreno. R. It's not Moreno. I'm okay. sorry. I like to roll the R's. I like <laughs> when to do that. A, when it's a, when it's a double like it. R. When it's a double R, like arroz, like you do, but not. Arroz con pollo. <laughs> Guys, it's so fun to roll okay. your R's at home. Do it at okay, home. Okay, all right. But I, I want to get yes. your thoughts on this okay. thing. So um, here's an article right now. How the migrant influx is causing tensions in one of the most Hispanic cities in the United States. Uh, shock or alert. It's seen. Miami and Hialeah, Hialeah mm -hmm. uh, which is, yeah, right now, I mean, Hialeah is 20 minutes away from here. It's, uh, it's yeah. where all the Cubans basically hang out yeah, here. Yeah, that's where my parents are. I'm living are. in Little Havana. At the You're moment. living in Little I'm Havana. That's Little also, Havana right I mean, now. Little Havana, you don't yeah. need to be a professor to know that Little Havana is it's named after Cubans. Havana, Cuba. No one speaks English. But in the last two years, nobody speaks English. <laughs> no. 80,000 Cuban migrants have settled in Hialeah. Yeah. Hialeah's mayor, Esteban Ovo. Mm -hmm. Did I say that okay? I don't, I don't know. He <laughs> blames the southern border's collapse for Hialeah's strain of resources Ooh. and the lack of affordable. So you have a Cuban mayor who has built an entire city on Cubans, uh, basically saying, shut down the border. Uh, and I, our good friend, Andrew Schultz, who's going to be on the PBD podcast in, I think, two weeks, he gives a uh, very funny anecdote here to how Cubans feel about the border. Mm -hmm. Malik can play that. My favorite. We got Cubans out here. Turn up a little bit. Cuban's really my favorite, y'all. I'm not gonna lie. I love, I love. Okay, well, I say that. I love Cubans because uh, y'all turn into conservative Republicans immediately after getting to America. Like, y'all are refugees, immigrants, and the second you get that dry foot. The second that foot dry, you're like, okay, and the immigration, he said, no, he said, no, hey, he said, no, immigration, hey, it's too many people, it's too many people, how, how, hey, we need a system, we need law, we need law, what, my that, foot dry, that's exactly my what foot I sound dry, like. that, that's me, I'm American now, feel it, feel it, touch it, tócalo, touch it, tócalo, okay, I cannot play domino at the table, there's too many people coming, I cannot play domino. How I play domino if everybody coming? <laughs> I'm not like you. I'm dry foot. You went back. That's different. That's different. That's different. That's different. I'm dry. So All right, we can pause it right there. So it's actually very funny because I want to get your thoughts on this. He says. Uh, it's very different. It is. I dry food, you wet back. That's how it works. It because is different. The, the we are different. The policy in America forever, especially That's in Miami, was uh, the, the Cubans, they didn't, you know, Q, everyone thinks, uh, um, you know, the, 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 the people that generally don't know how the map works and geography <laughs> works, you know, Cubans are different we from Mexicans in. that are different from Venezuelans yeah. that are different from Colombians. Cuba is 90 miles south of, the Miami, uh, of Key West in Miami. Mm -hmm. Mexico border, that's, it's a totally different thing. Right. Like Marcelo Hernandez is like my little brother, basically. He used to do a joke. Uh, uh, he goes, uh, a guy comes up to him, he goes, uh, you're Mexican? He goes, no, not Mexican. He goes, you're white? He goes, why did you stop there? There's so many other yeah. Latino yeah. countries. Yeah. But the way that it worked in the immigration <laughs> system, the uh, Cubans, you know this, they would flee Cuba they would get on their raft and they would sail to America. As soon as they put that dry foot down, they could not be deported. Wet foot, dry foot. Yeah. What is it? Wet foot, dry foot. Yeah, like basically you exactly. just have to get to Miami. But in the border these the days, key. it's a lot different. So as a Cuban, you know, a family is Cuban, 
Do you not have empathy for what's going on? They're crossing the border. How do you distinguish between, all right, the Cubans, they can come through, they get the right foot. The Mexicans, the wetbacks, not, not so fast. And granted, they're finding Afghanis, Chinese, Iranians, uh, Azerbaijanis. They're finding people from all over the world that are crossing the border here, not just Mexicans. I mean, a lot of people want to label this. So as a proud Cuban-American, how do you process that? I, I can't make this clear enough. There is nothing to do with my, par my, yeah, my parents, my grandparents, when they came over here fleeing communism and what they did when they got here. First of all, and they didn't come in a boat, they came in a plane. But when they came over here and their work ethic and their buy into the American dream and their contribution to this country, to what is happening now, it's, and, and what I'm saying also is a generational thing. Cause I'm saying when my grandparents left, my parents left, that was like, right there communism happened they they left right away mm -hmm. even the ones that are coming now because they've been in cuba for so long and they have communism and they just like their their brains are just mush some of them come and they still have some idea of like i want to get away from that and some come in and it's the same thing as what you're seeing in the grocery store with the TikTok. Mm -hmm. so but i i cannot express this enough what my parents and again grandparents because they were older when they came my, my parents were young my grandparents coming over here and even my husband coming over here and what's happening now has absolutely nothing, nothing, can I make this clear? Nothing to do with what, what, with what is happening. They're, they came here and they contributed so much, I would say even more. And Hialeah, what you were just talking about, I, I, I lived there for a while, the restaurants were there. My parents grew up there, we, we started the restaurants there. Hialeah was built off a bunch of people that came. They, so there were entrepreneurs, there were doctors, lawyers, whatever, professionals in Cuba. They came over here, they started from scratch. And in their small lifetime, from 25 to 60, my grandparents sent both of their kids, my mom and my uncle, to private universities. It, they got here when they were 25. With a newborn and pregnant, they got here and sent both their kids to private university and have two professional, I would say, above average successful kids that were first generation here. I mean, it, that is not what you're seeing here. This is, this is a complete opposite. This is giving back to the country that did so much to you to I'm going to take every single thing. And like we were saying, it's because they are incentivized to do so. Where before it was, they were incentivized to work really hard to, to make it. Um, but I, I really... But do you think the people who are coming in now everywhere else, if they came in during the time of your grandparents, it would be more accepted than they're coming in today? Because I'm sure there are also immigrants coming in from other who are countries. pregnant and they want a better life. And I'm not saying all immigrants are bad people. Like like you said, Hialeah is built on, you know, a whole yeah, bunch but, of... But why are they... Because that was the whole thing. It was communism, let's get out to have a better life. Mm -hmm. This is... Mm -hmm. They've been messed up forever. They are messed up and they're just going, oh, they, I really, in, in my heart of hearts, I believe, mm -hmm. they are coming because they're painted this, you get free this, you get free that. You come, you walk in and essentially you get a goodie bag mm -hmm. that has, a, you know, the phone and you get... T what were they doing? Ten thousand dollar debit card in New York. They like, weren't doing that when your grandparents. Absolutely no. It was the so, complete no. opposite. Is what I'm saying. It could be the timing. Nobody was is, getting that. No. Whether you were Russian, whether you're Italian, whether nobody you're Irish, getting, whether you're Cuban. No. Nobody was getting what some of these people are getting nothing, today. Nothing. Which leads me to my last topic on this. If we mm. can pull this up, uh, it seems to me that the inmates are running the asylum. Mm -hmm. Oh God. We've heard this uh, theory before, but it's manifesting itself with the open border policy right now. And it seems like they're laughing at us. Yes. And they're seeming like the guy, the Venezuelan guy is saying that I don't work because I have allergies and that it's okay just <laughs> no, because he's he allergic shot to somebody, he, you know, made a mistake. These are things that you should, we should stand for and say, no, we don't play this game over here. Right. Um, and, and I'm never one to villainize immigrants because if you grow up in Miami, you have Cuban friends, you have Colombian friends, you have Venezuelan friends, you got Jamaican friends, you have Puerto Rican friends, you have Mexican friends, you have Jewish friends, you have uh, Muslim friends, like that, the Russian friends. Like, but yes. there's something going on in America that's giving right you pause of being like, this ain't it, y'all. Yeah. This ain't it. And we saw the story that happened a couple weeks ago when the... You know, the, the, the Mexican Tupacs who beat oh. the shit out of the some, uh, yeah. the police in New York got out of, out of jail, no bail, oh, that's God. it, they left out. But they just beat up some cops, no big deal. But now, unfortunately, someone's dead. Mm. And it's gonna only get ugly until they figure this out. So ICE confirms, here's an article right here, mm. that the Georgia student murder suspect had entered the US illegally and was previously arrested in New York City. This is a Fo in New York City. This is a Fox News story. 
So, how's uh, Malik can pull that up. Jose, Jose Antonio Ibarra, two R's. So, we're going to roll yeah. the R on this one. There you go. I learned something today. He's the murder suspect of the Georgia nursing student. Her name was Lakin Riley. All right. Lakin Riley. He entered uh, the U.S. illegally in 2002 under Joe Biden. That's just facts. Um, and ICE confirmed this. He was previously arrested in New York City for a license violation injuring a child. ICE usually requests local law enforcement detain suspects like Ibarra, but to, due to New York City's sanctuary city laws, he was released before detainer. Guys, uh, as Georgia Governor Brian Kemp says, every state is now a border state, especially the uh, sanctuary cities. So she was a University of Georgia student who was found dead uh, near a lake on campus. Ibarra now faces multiple charges, including malice murder, felony murder, aggravated battery, aggravated assault, false imprisonment, kidnapping, hindering a 911 call, and concealing another's death. I mean, this guy. Disgusting. Disgusting. So um, when the governor of Georgia basically says, this is Biden administration's fault. Um, every state is now a border state. That's what's happening right now. He went on to question why illegal immigrants with criminal records are not deported. I think everyone has the exact same question at this point. Um, what the hell's going on here? It's like when the Trump did the Muslim ban and was accused of being a, a racist or an Islamophobe, you know, it was on the heels of ISIS running amok all along the Middle East people in america yeah. um sympathizing with them there were isis cells here and he basically said shutting it down until quote unquote we figure out what the hell is going on here so now that same situation seems to be happening in america with the border what the hell is going on here mr jake to be honest, I'm more interested about the incentive structures behind why they're, why they're actually coming. However, I do think that it's rather obvious that if people are coming across the southern border, they're generally going to be from lower socioeconomic classes, so they're going to probably have more of a proclivity towards violence. Mm. You're going to get a lot more gang members. So when you put them all together in a, a refugee facility or an asylum seeker facility before you catch and release, then you're going to get people who are troublemakers. But like I said, that seems in inevitable to me. That's kind of like a, a bit of a yawn, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I'm more interested in the incentive structures behind why they're coming. There's clearly an incentive for these people right. to be coming across the border and coming illegally. Mm -hmm. And then when that incentive structure is there to be coming in that manner, then there's going to be people who are much more violent. Mm -hmm. If there's an incentive for people to come through in the correct way, mm -hmm. then you're going to get a different caliber of person. Mm -hmm. and you're going to get people who are educated and you're going to get people who are professionals. Yeah. Amy, you wanted to weigh in on this? I'm just, honestly, anything that comes easy, you take for granted. Right. You don't respect it. So agree, going back to the incentive structures, you talk about your grandparents, what they had to work, what they had to contribute. I mean, Kyla, myself, probably Jake now, as you attempt to move over here, if that's your plan, we have respect for mm -hmm. due process. We know how expensive this was. Hiring the lawyers, like, that I've been going through this process for five, six years now. I haven't seen my family in five, six years. There's a lot of sacrifices we've had to make. It's a completely different conversation mm -hmm. to people who are being incentivized to come here to get a handout. Yep. And maybe mm. there's some people who are coming and they have good intentions and they want a better mm -hmm. life and they're being swept up in all of this but just like you can't build an argument off the exception to the rule yeah. you can't build policy around an exception to the rule that's so Great good point. Amy, i want to say one so thing good. to that you said anything that comes easy you take for granted 100 mm -hmm. right it, there's a famous yeah. saying that you've heard it before if it was easy Everyone, Everyone would, would do, do it. it. Okay? Well, it's and easy. And that's and what's going doing on at the border. It. Yep. It's easy. It's so wide open. So you know who's doing, doing it? it. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From all corners of the earth. Yeah. So um, I want to get your thoughts on this. So do you have what it says on the Statue of Liberty? Malik? Okay, I get Kyla. I'll find it. While yeah, you find that, that Kyla, do you want to weigh in on this situation yeah, that maybe. happened in Georgia? On, I mean, it's just the murder. Yeah, it's just a tragedy. Like, uh, obviously, illegal immigration and like this, like failure that's occurring is is bad, right? I guess now I'll do the liberal pants stuff. So obviously, illegal immigration is not good. 
If you go to the border chief, what does he say? We're understaffed, we're underjudged, asylum turnover takes way too long, we have to catch and release. There is no way to detain all of these people, even though all they try to detain is typically single adults, right? And so the question is that I keep going back to is, then why was the bipartisan bill shot down? It was gonna give 1,500 extra agents, 100 extra judge, and an extra 4,300 staff for the border. And these things are like, I agree that there are legitimate issues. Another thing that you brought up that's really interesting, you said low economic status means that they're more criminological. Mm. Now, the 2020, I'd be super curious to see the 2023, 2024 data, because it's not out yet. But when we actually look at migrant groups from like the, two, the teens, like 2010 to 2020, per capita, they were doing significantly less crime than, uh, even illegal migrants were doing per capita less crime than legal gen pop. And so a really important question is, low SES doesn't actually predict recidivism or criminological, even though it's correlated. Crime tends to occur to poor people, at, in more often and poor areas, but it's actually a pretty small select type of group who do almost like 95% of the crime. And so what's great about this bill that got shut down is there was a much tighter asylum process vetting system where basically you couldn't just say, yeah, I'm fleeing prosecution, but you had to say what specifically you had to have certain levels of documentation or you were just turned around at the border and Republicans said no, even though that would probably decrease asylum seekers. Some were projecting like the progressives were saying like 95% would be shut down. It's probably not that high, but it would be a massive reversal and yet Republicans immediately blocked it. And so if anyone's listened to Republicans like fear mongering you about migrants, they're just as not interested in solving this problem. And it's just as much a power grab. And we need to be really clear about who we're talking about when we say migrants, because there are legitimate crises going on. There are legitimate people that are seeking asylum and there are people doing criminological things. And we need to vet between these two and not paint all of these groups as mm -hmm. a similar, similar brush because that's where we fall into like, obviously like unhealthy thing. And then, I, you know, it, it, there's no doubt that Mike Johnson and who is the speaker of the house, if you didn't know who that was, it just sounds like the most generic dude ever is <laughs> sort generic of white dude. Yeah. Uh, just waiting on word, whatever Donald Trump says. I mean, the, the people yeah. of the house, the Senate uh, at least is a little bit more freewheeling mm. and has more independent thought of what's going on in the, uh, than the Republicans in the house, no doubt. But, you know, as much as we can sort of admonish them and basically talk shit about them, it's the leftist policies that has got us here. And AOC, you have what? I got it. What? The Statue of Liberty. Cool, cool. give us one second on that. It's AOC that is sort of championing these causes uh, of the progressive left woke. Here's what happened with AOC um, this week. So she was doing a town hall. Do we have that article? Yeah. Um, and a guy basically said, all you care about is illegal aliens. And hecklers torch AOC during the town hall. The Democratic uh, representative from New York, AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Ortez, faced belligerent hecklers at the Queens Town Hall while promoting the Green New Deal. One yelled, the Green New Deal is a scam. They're giving the NYCHA uh, apartments away. That's the New York Community Housing Administration. Uh, they're giving illegal aliens $10,000 a day. I, I don't think it's a day. I think it's period per person. Um, but he challenged him and said, I want you to debate me, AOC. Debate me. This is one of the hecklers. Another heckler waved his finger at AOC, screaming, secure the border now. You don't care. All you care about is illegal aliens and their votes. Mm. Okay? You don't care about your constituents. You're a disgrace. You haven't said one word about violent Venezuelan migrants or illegals. This is the conversations that is now being had in New York. The same conversations that we're having that had in Texas, in New Mexico, Arizona, California for years. It's now happening in sanctuary cities like New York. I've seen you do a lot of content about your friend AOC. If you were going to debate AOC, what would you say to her? Well, I think that she's kind of the clown of the left when, when you look at it objectively. I mean, she claims to care so much and claims to be so bleeding heart about the lower socioeconomic classes of New York. Like when she, when she blocked the Amazon uh, headquarters coming to New York mm -hmm. in 2019, her claim was that this is going to affect the lower socioeconomic residents of New York and it's gonna push them out of the housing market. Well, I don't see her bleeding heart compassion for those same people when there are m all of these illegal immigrants coming in to the state that are going to have the exact same problem. They're gonna go into the lower socioeconomic places, they're gonna take people's jobs and they're going to push people out of the housing market. I, mm -hmm. I think she's just a hypocrite when it comes to that. But I she's not somebody who I really look to for sort of my, as like a barometer of 
a good leftist. But you're smart and you have common sense. The problem is the younger generation doesn't, you know, and, and uh, Nat doesn't want them on chat GPT or Gemini AI, but this is where they're getting their, you know, AOC. How many, does, how many followers does she have on Twitter? 10 million, if not more, Instagram? Mm -hmm. This social Democrat, this uh, socialism or so, so democratic, democratic socialism, socialist. I can't even interpret at this point. This is what the 25 and under crowd are looking for. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's, there's this, this, this common sense debate that is happening in America because she's in New York and you know, she can look at the Statue of Liberty and she can read the quote that's on the Statue of Liberty. And a lot of people might wanna say, well, doesn't she have a point? By the way, read this quote that's on the Statue of Liberty before we move on to our last topic. It says, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free the wretched refuse of young, teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, the tempest. Tossed. The tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Mm. Honestly, some of this, I don't even know what it means at this point. You know, if they could rewrite this, mm -hmm. I think they should do uh, a little bit more, tempest, dare I say. Tempest tossed means you've, you've gone through a hard time. But that's hard what they've, time. They've literally created that in New York. They've created that in all these areas, but for mm -hmm citizens that's the point is that all this give me your tired we're tired i'm exactly. yeah, I'm, I'm sure lake lake and riley's poor family is is tired it's right tired now. i so, think if we could rewrite this i think you guys would agree give me your eager give me your resilient your relentless your intelligent your innovative your hungry and your gratefulness yes for being in america and make yes. sure that you love america just like jfk once said Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Mm -hmm. Don't come here to take advantage of America. Mm -hmm. Come here to contribute 100%. to America. Yes. So let's leave it right there. Guys, last topic of the day. We have about 10 minutes left. Yeah. So let's see if we can fire through this real quick. Um, we're going to get into the age of politicians these days. Oh. Okay? Uh, I'm, I'm sure everybody is very upset to hear that everyone's favorite politician, uh, Mitch McConnell, is now going to be retiring come November. Uh, and Mitch McConnell's had a rough 2023. Uh, do we have the article about what, what he announced, by the way, before we play that amazing video from Mitch McConnell? So he's going to step down from the, from, uh, he's been the Senate majority or even minority leader for the last 20 something years. Um, but unfortunately, his entire legacy has been tarnished the last 12 months with videos like this. Do you have the actual video that, um, a recent video? See if you can play that one, not from the article, from something else. So if you're not familiar with what's going on with McConnell, this is where we've seen McConnell lately. You have that video? Running for re-election in 2026. Oh. oh man. Oh man. You know it's sad. <laughs> He's adorable. Did you no, hear the question, so Senator? Running for re-election in 2026? Oh, goodness. Poor thing. Put him to bed. Right, I'm sorry, you all. We're going to need a minute. Oh, my goodness. Anyway. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. All right, let, let's go, Mitch. Come on. All right, Mitch. Time for bed, buddy. All right. Night, night, night. night. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate right there. So, look, uh, when you look at top politicians' approval ratings, thanks, Malik. Mitch McConnell's approval ratings, by the way, you know what they are right now? Take the, a guess. Down the toilet somewhere. Take 30%. 30%? What do you think? No, no. I have, I have maybe like 15. 15? What do you think? Mitch McConnell. I was going to guess around 30 to 20%. 20%? Sure. I'll go 20. Okay. 25. 22. 6%. Oh, oh, wow. Uh, oh, poor thing. Just to put in perspective, <laughs> just to put in perspective, Biden, uh, Biden's approval rating is now 38%, some of the lowest we've seen on record. The lowest before him was Trump, which is currently at 42%. Um, AOC's approval record, uh, approval rating, 16%. Bernie, 20%. Pelosi, 19%. And Mike Johnson, the name you know, not even on the board right there. But um, wait, AOC is, what polling is this? I feel like this has to be a right leaning polling. There's no way AOC is 16% we'll and 10 million Twitter followers. There's no way. According, this is according to ChatGPT, and you know that they're never wrong. Ah, Gemini, Gemini, right? Gemini, 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 Gemini. Of course, yeah. it'll probably be higher than that. Well. It's but, the beacon of truth. <laughs> um, you know, older leaders are running the world. We have this Wall Street Journal article 
saying that they're basically they're not going anywhere. Eight of the 10 most populous countries in the world are governed by leaders in their 70s or 80s. Mm. Here it is right there. We all know that guy right there. Xi Jinping of China is 70 years old. Putin of Russia is 71. The Sheikh Hasina of Bangladesh, I'm sure everyone's big fans of his, he's 76. Modi of India is 73. Mahmoud Abbas, who runs the um, West Bank uh, of Palestine, um, 88 years old. Whereas Trump is 77, is going to be 78 in the next few months. And everyone's favorite president, Joe Biden, is 81 years old. By the way, do you have the article of he just went through a, um, a physical? Let me know if you guys, um, no way. let me know what you know, what you think about this. Uh, Joe Biden just got a physical. He underwent his annual physical review at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center, where he was pronounced fit for duty, y'all. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure everyone's buying that. Biden, Biden's previous checkups labeled him, quote unquote, healthy and vigorous. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he is. Public opinion is a little mixed. Well, here we go. 67% of voters think he's too old to effectively serve four more years. And they pointed out that Ronald Reagan received a clean bill of health in 1998, only to later disclose that he had Alzheimer's. So we'll see what happens with, um, with Biden and all this. So I, I set this all to say um, these older leaders who are running the world are going nowhere. And I, I think it's safe to say that whether Biden gets reelected He's going to be 82 by the time he gets reelected, or Trump will be 78, putting them as the oldest leaders in American history. We're seeing what's going on with that. Um, last point right here. This is we're we're, put, we're looping this all into the happy ending. Um, Joe Biden. Speaking of his age right now, uh, I know that the last thing on your mind is wanting to hear what Joe Biden thinks about good sex, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, that's where we are today. Uh, Joe Biden is going to let you know what he thinks about good sex, and this is the happy ending. No, thanks. So the White House oh, correspondent yeah. revealed Joe Biden's views uh, on sex during his golden years. An excerpt about Joe Biden's sex life is featured in the soon-to-be-released book American Woman, oh. The Transformation of the Modern First Lady from Hillary Clinton to Jill Biden. I, I'm sure you guys are all excited. Uh, <laughs> Biden joked to his aides that good sex is the key to a lasting and happy marriage, much to his wife's chagrin. There's Apparently there's stories that in 2004, when Joe Biden went to potentially run for the presidency back then, uh, Jill Biden would roll in to discourage her husband um, and wear a halter top and write the words no written on her stomach to encourage him not to run. So uh, Mitch McConnell short circuiting Joe Biden fucks. I think that's what's yeah. going on here today. <laughs> Donald Trump. 77, 78, I think whether you're a Trump fan or not, I think he's got a little more energy than Joe, than Joe Biden or McConnell. Uh, and we see the rest of the world leaders from Xi Jinping, 70, Putin, 71, and uh, Modi of India, 73. You know, our, our world leaders are senior <laughs> citizens. They're old, they're gray, and this is what's going on. Tie this all together where you see leadership around the world. Well, I'm, I actually like the idea of old people being leaders. I think that throughout history, we've had wise elders as our leaders. I think the problem more lies in the fact that they're not wise. They're elders, but they're not exactly wise. Mm -hmm. I think that these guys are the swamp creatures, if you want to use the Trumpism. These are the people who have been career politicians and who have come through sort of law and finance and, and served their buddies on, uh, on the boards of arms companies until eventually they get to the top. So these are not necessarily the kinds of people that I would like to see at the top. However, I think that there is a light on the, at the end of the horizon in the sense that we're entering into somewhat of an age of the entrepreneur politician, somebody who's gone out and done it, who's conquered a certain industry and now wants to treat the country like a business. I quite like that. But me, the notion of a wise elder who sort of sits on his throne and has his council of people who do uh, all of the all of the work at ground level, I like that idea. Okay. I like him to have a nice ring that everyone can sort of come and kiss, and he can just. <laughs> you want them to kiss the ring? Lord For, of the Rings just style. Is it is yeah. it is it fair to say that you're most likely to vote for Joe Biden versus Donald Trump? Well, I can't vote in the American election. Okay, if you had a vote. <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, probably I'd vote for Biden right now, but that's okay. not really out of a love for Biden. It's out of a, like, a concern for Trump more than What's anything. your biggest concern with Trump? Mm. 
you want me? Uh, do you want me to talk about that? We only have a couple people? minutes, so you know. <laughs> okay, I had more thoughts on old people being your, in power. Uh, CVS receipt and, and um, I don't like it. I don't like electing people who are willing to basically like uh, toss the constitution away. I think like Mike Pence uh, standing up and just, like basically refusing. Um, Judas. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a staunch <laughs> Republican, uh, and he was constitutional. I think what Trump was asking for was anti-constitutional. I'm not, like, super deranged about January 6th. I don't think it's, like, this crazy thing that's, like, the worst thing that's ever happened in America. Um, but I It happened in Brazil a few months after that. Nobody yeah. even talks about that. Well, we don't care about America. Um, but if I could maybe shift back to old people leading, I think most of the people that are leading now, uh, wise elders were good when there wasn't lead and gasoline for their entire life. Um, mm. And we know that they have plaque Tapwara. in their brain, they don't know what they're thinking <laughs> about, and they can't process. Mm -hmm. And the problem is they're probably mentally sound, but I do psychometric testing. I do IQ mm. tests. I can tell you the neuropsychological health of an 80-year-old at average is like, like two deviations below a 60-year-old. So I don't really care if he's healthy for 80 or 77. Um, he's still not what I would prefer leading, which is like around 60 to 50-year-olds like cognitive ability. So I'm really sussed out about having all these old people, especially that grew up in lead. I just like not interested. It's crazy to me that in 1992, a 46-year-old Bill Clinton... <laughs> was elected president, okay? And he is younger than Trump and Biden. A little food for thought. How old is your abuela and your abuela? Oh, my grandparents are old. How and old? I don't want them as president. How no, old? My, um, 87 and okay. 84. Now, would you be okay with your abuela running for president? Absolutely okay. not. But they're running but the world these but, days. Yeah, but not because of her age. That's just, yeah, she's... She's forgetting things. No, 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 no. That's different. Well, I'm not there's anti a lot of people that are forgetting these days yeah. that are running the world. Yeah, no. I'm and not anti-wisdom um, in the age, but Vivek said this, and I really liked it. Um, I like the idea of, he, kept, he says it all the time, fresh legs. I like the idea of somebody that their best days are ahead of them in that there's something to look mm -hmm. forward to. I like this idea also just in business and like hiring people that are younger that are still ambitious and they're still going for a goal. Now, that doesn't mean that they don't have this really strong, you know, counsel around them and, and cabinet and people that are speaking wisdom into them because I don't want them to think they're because the, the other thing about youth is I think I know it all that's not cute but that there's still this level of ambition I'm trying for something as opposed to my best days are behind me and this is mm -hmm. I'm, I'm coasting on the way out um so that's what I would say about that but um it's not necessarily the age. Dangerfield, you know, you learned a lot from your grandma when she was running around with Rodney back in the day oh, me your mom. thoughts on how all of the world's leaders are 70 plus What's the average life expectancy? 70. 78, but you know, if you're healthy, you could live to 100. Sorry, no exactly. These days. Well, that's the point that I was going to make. I mean, on the balance of probability, maybe what the average life expectancy is, maybe we should kind of keep that into consideration mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. People are going to be dying midterm, you know, <laughs> let alone their mental state. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, it comes back to how well you take care of yourself. Now, one thing that I can say is that physical health sometimes starts with mental health and what goes on internally. And when you compare Trump and Biden, only like a four year age difference, it really shows you what the work mind virus does to rot mm -hmm. you from the inside out, in my personal opinion. Or just too much And I'm ice being cream. funny, but I'm also being kind of serious at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I'll for leave sure. it there. For sure. Nat, final thoughts. No, I about agree. to have an old ass president one way or another. No, I agree. But even if uh, right now we're at a point, I kind of also do like the idea of having someone older and, wis and, you know, they have that wisdom. But, you know, today we're not really finding that. I do understand that because, like, you know, my dad's not in his 70s, but I look at him as someone who is able to provide wisdom, you know. So there is that comfort level. Now, I do think, you know, let's not forget you also have a team. You know, you can also have some young experts with that energy ahead on the team so you don't necessarily need the, the, the top guy to be the, the youngest of the team i also don't want the youngest guy leading the pack either if you want me to be honest um but at the end of the day it also does come down to what amy said which was how do you take care of yourself right what is your mental you know how do you your physical like are you sleeping during the interview like there's a <laughs> lot of aspects to it but let's not forget there's also the importance of a team Right? Who mm -hmm. is part of your team? Imagine mm -hmm. you have a, a, a young guy leading, but there's a whole bunch of sleeping people behind him because yeah. they're old. That also doesn't do us any good at either. Right. Um, so I think it's just a, a mixture of things, but that's, that's my feedback. Well, let me give you my final thoughts. And I, I come from the life insurance world, the financial world, and the cornerstone of what we do is called life expectancy. Right. And uh, there's ratings, how they rate your health. You can be 80 and in standard health, or you can be 80 and table six. I'm preferred health. And, uh, just because you're old doesn't mean that you're, you don't have your shit together. Right. You can be old and healthy. 
There's a big difference in that. I try to remind people, just because you're 80 doesn't mean that you're dying tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, you could live to 100. But if you're 80 and you have dementia and you have a weak heart and you uh, fall down a couple stairs, you might only have a couple years left. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem that we have. And we all know what happens when you're the president. We've seen the images of Obama. We've seen the images of Clinton. Somehow Trump is getting oranger and younger. I don't know how that's happening. That spray tan's working out for him. <laughs> they come in office with zero gray hairs. They leave <laughs> office looking like they're uh, from Lord of the Rings and they're Gandalf. It's a problem. But... Uh, the, the conversation that we're going to have over the next six months, and Carl Rove about, wrote about this, who was a uh, Republican strategist, and the conversation that you guys are all going to have to decide, a lot of people have made up their mind, but it's really on the independence, and of course this has to do with age, is which is worse, and what you're going to vote for, feeble old Joe Biden or angry old Donald Trump? And that is the question that everyone has have to answer come November, except for Kyla except for jake except for amy because they're not even american citizens so i'll vote for um, you you vote for Me you too. anyway guys you this was I'm an awesome for. episode <laughs> i appreciate you guys all oh. being here everyone has 10 seconds look in the camera let them know where to find you jake since you're one guy that's your camera give your shout out to yourself let the people know where to find you you can find me on Manect these days. Oh, I've just got a hat. Yeah. Shout out to Manect. <laughs> Manect, Jake Julius, but more so you can find me on YouTube, Rattlesnake TV, also Instagram and Twitter, Jake Rattle S N K, like Rattlesnook. There was no Rattlesnake. It, was, it wasn't available. So Jake Rattle S N K. And uh, that's about it for me. Thank you so much for having okay. me, Adam. Really of appreciate course, it. Of course, dude. Anytime. Honored whenever you're back touring the country, you know. Yes, sir. From Australia down under, you're welcome back. Kyla, huge fan. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming into the lion's den amongst these pretty conservatives out here <laughs> pretty and doing what you do. Uh, let the people know where to find you. Uh, yeah, you can find me everywhere at yeah. Not So Erudite, uh, Twitter, Twitch, uh, not Rumble though. Um, and also stay tuned because our new podcast is starting tomorrow called Bridges. So tune in if you and like And you're me. working with Destiny on that. Yeah, it's going to be a whole bunch of liberals just circle jerking each other. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Quite a lot of erudition for someone who calls himself not If there's anything I don't like, whether it's on the right wing side or the left wing side, it's circle jerks. So let me know when you want to get some conservative people on there. Maybe you'll have Jake on. We'd love See it. See what happens let with that. Know. Laura Padrino, Best Cuban Food in all of South Florida. Make sure to go there. Make sure to get your platanos, your arroz con pollo, nice. and your ropa vieja. Nice. Wow. Dude, Getting we're doing things around here. You're practically Laura, let Cuban. the people know where to find you. First of all, all love to all the girls. I know we had a couple of the rares moments, but all love, all respect, all across the board. Padrinos.com. Padrinos, there are five locations on Instagram at Padrinos Cuban. Like he said, best Cuban food in all of South Florida. I agree. Uh, Amy, oh, true to form, you were fantastic. You were wonderful today. And of course, you took a bathroom break. It's becoming a problem, y'all. <laughs> that little bladder. But why are you drinking so much, Amy? Got to stay hydrated. You want me stay to hydrate. fall on like fully structured sentences, right? Let's go. Got Amy, to stay hydrated. we're proud of you. We love you. Let the people know where to find you. Amy Dangerfield on every platform. Nice. That's it. There it is right there. Keep it Short and sweet. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that, you know, Adam, you know, I can't confirm or deny what's going on here. Um, speaking of confirming and denying, let me confirm that Natalia is going to read some super chats. I am. And let's wrap up. We've got some great super chats. So first one's by Batch Code. This is first super chat. And he says, shout out to Amy Dangerfield, super bass. Love her passion. Hashtag no. There it was. No. I can't do it. No. Can I do it? No. There Wait, you go. Do you say it like that? No. 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 He does it okay. as well. There's an R at the end. Do I? Different. I didn't yeah. notice. And then uh, we've <laughs> got Corella Gorella Blanco, twenty dollars. She said Adam can't read. I'm just kidding. He did comment that, but that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's not the chat. But I wanted to comment that. No, yeah. he did say shout out to Amy Dangerfield for being nice. a leader of women. And then we have uh, Original. He said, all the ladies said, get rid of the patriarchy. Uh, don't look for men to fix the illegal immigration part, uh, problem. Fix it your damn self. When Trump said we need to get rid of them, y'all said he was a bigot. No patriarchy, no protection. Okay. Then we had uh, Mr. Ryan26, his also first super chat. Uh, he said, shout out to Erudite. Thank you, for always, thank you for talking about ADHD on your channel and with Destiny in the past. It has helped me understand more about myself and helped me get with a doctor. I think you're awesome. 
Aww. um awesome and then we have this last super chat i want to leave it for last because it's a great chat for sauce he said love adam and how good he is doing with his uh and how good he's doing with this woman you've gained my respect him standing up to that girl on access vegas props to rollo and carl <laughs> Uh, yeah, the Access Vegas thing. And that then fun. I think that's it for Super Chats. Thank you guys so okay. much. Like, comment, subscribe. Yeah. Do all that fun stuff. Last shout out goes to Malik out there. He was Malik. on point today. Yes. You know, I'm a little upset with him because when they went to Gemini, Google, AI, myself, Malik showed up. <laughs> so you they want that. me instead. That's right. <laughs> Black is the new white. That's what's going on here with DEI, y'all. Oh, yeah. uh, anyway, guys, thank you for being a part of everything today. Thank you guys for being on the panel. You crushed it, the lovely ladies and the stud of a gentleman here from Australia. Our first time having two Aussies on the uh, yeah. on, on the stage. Two, two. Okay. Yeah. What happens when two Aussies make a make a baby? It's an Aussie. A kangaroo it's pops out. That's what happens. A little Joey, we call Boom, it. Boom, a little pouch. A little jelly roll. Thank you guys for being here. Sub to the channel. We'll see you guys next Thursday here on the SauceCast. Have a great weekend, everybody. It's the SauceCast, baby.